better late than never, but I do believe we are live now. We caught the uh, stream on the TV, so I've got a view on it. Music. Always with music. Okay. Hello, all. We are finally, hopefully, live. Let me know if you see any issues with anything. I hope not. Uh, I think my my camera switcher. Let me try switching cameras quick. Yeah. I think my uh, HDMI switcher might be on its way out. Uh, I don't know because the last couple of streams, I had to like reset it up in the stream. It made no sense whatsoever. Big issue, no cat. She's sleeping under the desk. I tried waking her up before the stream, but she's been, uh, she's she, she's in her own land. It's beautiful outside. We had all the other animals outside. She's just like snoozing. So what's on the schedule for today? As uh, Ella Fox asking, well, as much progress as we can make because I got to get this build done. Caught you live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. John, welcome. She's waiting for the new box, uh, the new box to be completed. Yeah. Um, so I'll catch you folks up to where we're at now. Yeah, Rocky Mountain's coming up. Got to get this done. So where we're at with this thing. Last time I streamed it, it had a black frame. Fabrico came on as a lab intern. Welcome to the memberships. Thank you for the support. Um, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. Speaking of, I will be at the Fabrico booth both Saturday and Sunday greeting folks, chatting, talking shop. And uh, the new Rat Rig, uh, well, I, I don't think I've streamed since this announcement. Rat Rig V Core 4, the new Rat Rig printers, will be on display in the Fabrico booth. And uh, Sonat, I don't know how to pronounce that. If I'm getting that right or wrong, I don't know. From Rat Rig is coming over and will be there. Oh, and the mill. Yes, their mill will be on display too. So, yes, since the last stream, this thing had a black frame when we picked it up. Spilled black, now it's white. Yeah, or spilled white paint. Yes. So, since the last stream, thank you, thank you, thank you to DLLPDF. Uh, DLLPDF will, uh, got together this white frame for me on super short notice. They turned it around like that so we could move forward with this project. Uh, it is a one of their frames and carries some things with that, but they got a good job of powder coating this thing in. It's white, it's ready to roll. RH3D, welcome. I swapped the frame over and I pretty much got us back to the point where we had left off with the last stream. Not exactly, but pretty close. So there are a couple of changes that have taken place, not just the white frame. I also reprinted a bunch of parts on this too, um, such as like the the gantry at each end, the XY gantry, these were like way stripier before. Um, yeah, these were the ones that were on there and they were like way stripier of a transition of color. Now it's like a way more smooth transition. Ella Fox became a member, thank you. Uh, so way smoother transition of color now. The mini SB looks different. Yes, the mini SB is different. Lower table a little bit. So this mini SB has the NH2. I don't exactly know how to pronounce that username. It's the, it uses HGX gears. Uh, white was for sure. Uh, white was definitely the right call. Seeing it like this, I like it, white was absolutely the right call. Uh, I painted, I had to paint the Kirigami bed to get it to work. Yeah, the, the color transition on things, like I, I redid these front idlers, I redid the XY parts. Uh, that's mostly what I redid, but it looks so much smoother of a color transition. And it's similar color transition on the, the Mini SB. So, but this Mini SB is using that HGX or the Proto Extruder 2.0, Proto Extruder 2.0 uh, from NH2 on uh, printables takes the HGX gears. I had to order them in from AliExpress. They're not in there right now because I'm waiting on them. Um, so it's basically like an open source printable version of a cross between a mini Sherpa and a uh, LGX from Bontech. You know. Uh, Mandix now a brony. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's a heck of a leap. But uh, I also, I designed this mount 
or well, this mini SB I designed uh, because the mount flange for this extruder is mini Sherpa. Uh, it's Sherpa extruder spacing, but this wouldn't fit a Sherpa. Um, it's it this little the area where the Voron logo is sticks up too much for the Sherpa that sticks out front more. So this housing is made just for this extruder. I designed it and I will be releasing it once I'm 100% that everything works properly. So yeah, it looks like if Barbie had a 3D printer, awesome. I'm not mad about that. Um, and I also had to design up a Pico Bilical mount for the back because this is a, uh, a LDO kit, came with a Pico Bilical. I had to design up a mount for it to work with this extruder. So um, that's the start of the show. Basically the only other thing that I've done really did you remove any black magic parts? Not really. They, they, there weren't that many to begin with. Um, I put in the Nevermore. I did mount this up. Um, and that's pretty much the only thing I did outside of the stream that I, that wasn't previously a thing or whatever. So there's the, the Nevermore dark, dark magic down on the bottom and up on the top is still the unicorn, but there's not a lot of color transition on that one. So yeah, um, and the skirts are going to be dark magic. I actually had a failure. Um, I had a failure. So, um, the first Nevermore I printed, I assembled the Nevermore and then it, it, uh, it's hard, it might be hard to see it. It split down the middle between the two fans and then over here in this section um i don't know what the heck happened there and also not only that but the the fan retainer pieces that hold the fans in place also shattered i have no idea what happened i didn't drop it it just was sitting on the bench and broke no idea what happened um so i reprinted it and the new one is perfectly fine so it's not even on the layer lines yeah it's actually it's like this one is kind of layer um no it's it's across here, but it actually crosses layers in the middle there. And the same thing here. It actually comes up a across a handful of layers, across, and then on the side, it goes up a handful of layers. Like, it's a it's a serious break. It's so weird. Um, don't know. I, I don't know. So we'll find out. Maybe, maybe this dark... Ma also, you do have to remember, the filament that I had to start with on this was not the production run. It was a pre-production run, so maybe there was something off with this piece uh, or the filament I used to print this. I don't know. Luckily, I didn't use the dark magic parts for any of the motion system, really, so not an issue there. Some stresses while printing. It could be internal stresses, because the way, if you're not familiar with the Nevermore V6, the fans go in, and then there, there's these, like, spring clips sort of thing uh, that... that internally just hold the fans in place and put outward pressure so once it's assembled there is outward pressure inside of there don't know don't know i got a good nevermore in there printed fine with the new spool of dark magic that cookie cad sent me so i don't know i don't care um a couple other things i've done since last stream i printed the uh auxiliary park cooling fan we're going to be running uh let's switch cameras so I printed up an auxiliary park cooling fan, uses a 7530 centrifugal blower fan uh, and mounts to the side of the bed, of course, on, on this side. And this is an available design on printables. I remixed it personally, but yeah. There are different clips for different 5015s. Yeah, I know. And I just could not figure out um, which 5015 clips to use. Or actually, the housings are slightly different. Um, the housings are ever so slightly different between like the Honey Badger Fabrico fans and like, um, I think the other ones are not Sunons, GDS time ones. They, they have different housings. I don't know. My fans fit because the fans I used in here are from LDO. They're actually, the fans I put in here are uh, for the Trident build uh, because that came with the parts for a Nevermore, but I'm using a Nevermore Mini in that, so I didn't need them. I don't freaking know. You'll need a UFO board from XR Bunker. I'm getting one at um, uh, Rocky Mountain. I'm getting one at Rocky Mountain, but it's going in my other 
uh, build. It's going in my 2.4, but uh, I think it's because the hubs protrude a bit on the honey badger ones. Okay. Remurf. Remurf. Um, and I also redid my uh, little tiny braces, my 50-15 or 15-15 braces. So frame braces will go uh, boop, there. Silly little frame braces. I, I shrunk down the ones that I had. You can just barely see over there. The ones on my Mercury 1.1. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I made these. Are they going to do anything other than look neat? Probably not. They're so tiny and silly. But I'm going to put them in. So I might hold off on putting them in until I run input shaper graphs on this thing, then put them in and see if they actually do anything. But uh, uh, thank you uh, about the uh, the UFOs. I'm not worried about it for this build. This build's getting daylight on a stick. Uh, it's getting, well, I'm sorry, RGB daylight on a sticks on there. Uh, RGB bed front. And I put sequins on the tool head too. So there are lights on the tool head, just white lights. I think with the white internal, white frame and the white pieces, it's going to be well lit. I'm not worried about that. Um, yeah, rainbow sticks. That's, um, uh, or disco on a stick. Knock off ones. I, I, I got them off Amazon. I would I would have gotten the ones from Adam, uh, direct from Adam, but I, they wouldn't have come in time. So. I picked up some knockoff ones on Amazon real quick. I got them like next day. So, um, ba, ba, ba. yeah. All right. I think we're ready to, to roll back into building this thing. Shame on you. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm sure uh, if I would have called, if I would have emailed Adam, he probably would have sent them, but I just, I couldn't wait. So. Uh, ba, 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 ba. okay. I just want to grab the instructions, make sure I'm not missing anything, and we can keep rolling with this build. Oh, somebody asked about the um the back panel. Let me get there. Uh, back panel. I did change which back panel we're gonna use. Uh, the back panel in the enclosure in the housing. I did change that, only needs more ghost flames. You know what it really needs? I used to have some. I don't know what happened to them. It really needs one of those E3D Obsidian stickers. Uh, the unicorn, the dead unicorn one they have. They sent me a handful of those, and I don't know what happened to them. It needs one of those is what it needs, because it's got a Rebo in it. So, all right, take this out of here. Uh, yes, this is the back panel we're going to use. Um, I felt like blue was a little bit of an underrepresented color in this whole thing right now. So this is the blue one. Uh, Ruby and I kind of talked about and stick and uh, whatever and it worked it out. Um, so this blue one is going to go in, of course, back here, my design of the hex panel. I'll switch cameras real quick. Ah, too quick. So that panel is the one that's going to go in there. Uh, I thought about reprinting this with a white face on it, and I just, uh, I don't know. I, I pained about it. I feel like it needs more black magic in, or dark magic in here. Because part of this was, part of the white frame for me was I think the white frame is doing a much better job of showing, yeah, I like the contrast. I think the white frame is doing a much better job of, t of showing the lighter color in the dark magic. Because everybody on camera thinks the dark magic is black, and it's just not. It's blue, green, black, and purple, and it kind of color shifts. And I think the white is doing a really good job of, like, you can definitely tell that's kind of blue right now. Whereas before, with the black frame, you couldn't tell that. So, uh, I'll catch up with chat here. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, Oh, matchstick and rainbow stick are the short ones. Disco and daylight are uh, are the bigger ones. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I just have run. I've, this is the first time I've gotten any of them personally. So, Jack, welcome. Um, currently designing a mod for the 0.2 to have dual MGN sevens on X with a 
12 by 10 aluminum tube. Interesting. Hopefully not a waste of time. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully it's worth, uh, worth your time. We'll see. I just got in the parts for my other Zero from Fabrico um, to put an MGN 9 on that. I'm going to try a 9 on my other one because I intend to use this machine. Like I'm intending to keep this one. Sorry, I'm not giving it away. Um, so I intend to keep this one and I want to kind of like compare the MGN 7 versus 9 um, between the two. So they're kind of relatively similar designs overall. Uh, speaking of mods, imagine a tool changing V0. Um, there's tool changing microns, so there are printers for ants that can do uh, tool changing. Um, so like a uh, hedgehog, zombie hedgehog, hedgehog makes is currently building a tool changer um, micron, I'm pretty sure. Micron plus. <clears throat> um, what happened? Did you paint the frame? No, DLL PDF got me a white powder coated frame. So it would be a great auction item. You know, maybe like maybe I'll maybe I'll get rid of it at some point. We can auction it off for charity or something at some point. Um, for now, I want to keep it. So that's all. <clears throat> My voice is definitely going to be strained by the end of the day. So bear with me. Okay. Um, No, thought I had a Discord notification. Oh, Discord notification. That reminds me. We will be back to the Trident soonish. Probably not till after Rocky Mountain at this point. I don't have time between here and Rocky Mountain. But um The Trident. Uh Vitali got the MGN or not the MGN. The nine millimeter belt tool head done. Domenico, welcome. So it's on the way. Um there is a new New carriage mount for that machine on the way from Vitali. He got it whipped up and successfully after a handful of failures. So digging the white frame. Awesome. Okay, where are we at here? Um, pretty much last stream I left off with not being able to find these. The uh, little 20 millimeter standoffs that I wanted. So M3 standoffs. So we can get the tool headboard on here for the Pico. Pico Bilical. Now I want a printer with a white frame. Honestly, it looks so much better than I expected it would. Uh, like, I knew it was going to look good. I knew it was the right choice, but it looks better than I expected. All right. I designed this uh, Pico Bilical mount to use 20 millimeter standoffs. Uh, I wasn't a fan of white frames, but now that I've seen this, nice. I mean, yeah, like... I kind of knew it was the right call, but I didn't think it was going to be as big of a difference as it is. So it's a shame they're not offered more. Yeah, I do agree. Uh, I guess not a lot of call for white frames, and I get that. So I do get that. Uh, I got to take this off of here so I can get this back. Back or the uh, other mount, motor mount screw. I want a purple frame. Um, I mean, there are purple frames out there. Like, I mean, DLL PDF will do custom colors. They'll do frame colors that you want. They have a whole arrangement of them. They are powder coated. They're not anodized. This is powder coated. And especially this V0 frame has a serious caveat. Um, there is a serious caveat to the design of this frame that I am not a fan of, honestly. Um, it looks great. I'm really happy with the look we got here. They were the only folks who were going to make this happen in time to get it to the show. Um, unfortunately, there's... Uh, if you're not familiar... Clearance problem with the thickness of the paint. No. I think it might be caused by a clearance problem with the thickness of the paint. Because powder coating, it is powder coated. Powder coating is thick, so that is a consideration to be taken in. Maximum Bombastic, welcome. It doesn't use M3 nuts. You know, Maker Beam, XL extrusions, LDO extrusions, you slide M3 nuts, you preload them, and that's how you assemble a V0 or printer for ant using 1515s. These don't accept uh, M3 nuts. They, the, the openings inside of the, whoop, 
the openings inside of here, which is a little out of focus there, uh, are bigger. So M3 nuts just spin. They don't catch. They spin. Um, uh, they have their own extrusion profiles. It's a different profile. I don't know where they're getting it from. It might be Masumi. I don't know. Um... Yeah, you need to use NDN carriers to, to use M3 nuts. Yeah, I printed I printed a handful of them. I haven't tried them yet. Um, I did print a, a handful of an NDNs. They sent... They sent... Um, bah. They sent these, like, little rectangle nuts with it. Kind of like the Maker Beam nuts, but not. Uh, that's what they sent with this. And they're a royal pain in the ass. Um, they have specific ones on their site that fit their profiles. I think it's these they included with the frame. Uh, and, and one of the, the wonderful things about this is these are like the LDO square nuts. You can put them in afterward. I didn't have to preload any hardware on this to build this thing to this point. So that's a big positive. Oh, I mean the prints. Okay, well, I didn't see that. That's good to know. And that's one of the things when I get to Rocky Mountain, I'm going to have a talk with them about that. Um... When I, when I get to Rocky Mountain, I'm going to mention that I think they need to mention this on the listing for the frames. Uh, because I checked on the Discord, like the Voron Discord, and there were quite a few people who had run into this problem and were kind of upset about it. Um, and I was pretty annoyed by it, personally. I think they need to like have that glaringly, like, by the way, our frames don't accept M3 nuts. You need to use these printable ones or these ones will provide you. Um, I think that really needs to be a thing. Is that only an issue with the 1515s? It should only be an issue with the 1515s because any of the other ones should use regular roll-ins, but I haven't used any of their other frames to say. I don't know. Um, the problem with these rectangular nuts, it doesn't end there. The problem is that these rectangular nuts that they provide, they, you can put them in like uh, with afterward, which is wonderful. That's excellent. But uh, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera. Let me let me show here quick. Uh, I don't think it really shows there. Let me adjust focus. They sit crooked in the extrusion when you just put them in there. I don't know if you can tell that, but it it sits at an angle. So when you try to thread into that, you've got to like, it's either going to cross thread or you have to somehow support that. Like what I've been doing is sticking a flathead screwdriver bit underneath of it and like angling it and tilting it so I can get the screw started and then continue. Um, not ideal. So not ideal, but that's what I've been doing. And it works, but it is a lot more work than just a regular V0 build. So. I uh, see they have a little printed tool that helps get those in. I missed that. I looked on their website a couple of times and I didn't see any reference to any of this stuff. And I also, I also jumped on the Voron Discord anyway and checked there and just found other people complaining about issues and then saying they used some no-drop nuts that worked pretty well. So, don't know. I've got it to this point. It's working. The whole way I'm going about this is working. Let me let me look at the website quick. Maybe I can throw some to a printer real quick and we can move on and get a couple of them printed. Uh, DLL PDF. Didn't even know enough to know it wasn't normal, to be honest. Yeah. 1515 15 nut tool. Okay. DLL PDF 1515 nut tool. Let's see what we get. Helpful inf information. Oh, they have step files for their extrusions. That's nice. Nut tool. There it is. Uh, let me open it up in Orca Slicer quick. And I'll send some to print. I don't know how many more we're gonna need, but we're gonna find out. I only the only question is, can the nut tool be used? Well, I'm gonna look at it in a second. 
It's a very quick print. I'm sure it is. Uh, I don't have any filament loaded right now, but I'm sure it is. Where's my mouse? There it is. Computer's over there. Okay. Let's load up this file. Uh, I should be able to screen share with you. It, you might lose me for a second. Let me, uh, let me check here. Yeah, I thought so. Properties. Black magic. Deactivate. Activate. You royal pain in the butt. Okay, whatever. You're losing me for a second while I uh, slice this. Okay, yes, this would be massively helpful. This would be massively helpful. I'm going to print a couple of them just to... Uh, and see, this wasn't linked on the product page for the 0 0.2 frame. It just wasn't. I should note, I did buy this frame. They rushed production of it for me, but I did buy it. Uh, I'm going to switch to my 2.4. Warm up my 2.4. All right. Don't want to brim on that. Do some mouse ears. I find mouse ears come off a lot easier than a brim does. And still get the job done. All right. Cool. Thank you for that, folks. I'll get those printing. Uh, that might help. Probably help. Because there's a few we got to do left. Yeah. They had no idea what the demand they'd get when they started. Yeah, understandable. Pshh. Uh, it's getting a regular top hat. Yes, it's getting a regular top hat, not the uh, shorter LDO one. Regular top hat. Uh, do these work? These nuts work with other frames? I don't know. Still have no idea. I still have a day job. Oh, that's good to know. Um, LDO has square nuts that work. Uh, I don't know if their nuts work or not. I know they work with their frame. The LDO ones get into extrusions easier than these ones do, but the LDO ones, LDO ones spin in this frame as well. So, is what it is. Uh, okay, now we can move forward. Thank you for inf informing me on that. Yeah, I know when I was communicating with uh with DLL PDF, they were they were responding to me like pretty early in the morning, so uh regular hop tat, uh yes. I'm pretty sure the regular top hat is hundred millimeters, the LDO one is eighty. I don't know why that is. We're going with a hundred millimeter. I'm gonna have to custom cut my own top acrylic panels, but I'm not worried about that. Um Toolhead needs cat ears, yeah. Do you think it's worth uh, building a Voron now that the SVO8 is a thing? I haven't even I haven't seen anything about it yet to say, other than I know it exists. Uh, I haven't had a chance to watch anybody's content about it yet, so I'm not the person to ask. I would say uh, they did reach out and say they were going to send me one. The uh, SVO8 that is. Uh, they claimed they've been trying to reach me for for like months or something about like whatever. And I checked my email. They've never, they had the wrong email, I can only assume. So, uh, you want mods and later upgrades? Go Voron. Honestly, if you want to pick any of your own stuff, you're, you're probably better off going Voron. Like, I don't know. Till, till I see an SV08 and we see mods coming out. I saw somebody earlier say the SV08 has the potential to be like the next Ender 3 in like being a platform to build on top of, which, yeah. Um, I could see that. It looks promising. It does look promising. We'll see. I have no idea. Okay. Where were we? I already put these standoffs in, so now I can put the um, Pico Bilical on here. This piece. Uh, I think we'll see a few AMS-like setups at Rocky Mountain. Well, I mean... Um, yeah, Creality announced theirs today. So, Creality has one coming. Um, 
Also, since Creality is basically running Clipper, I know Salt. That's the wrong spot. I'm threading it into my standoff, not into the, the carriage piece it's supposed to go on. Um, error. Where was I at? Uh, since Creality runs Clipper, there is the potential that we could be seeing adoption of their hardware to main Clipper. Uh, who knows? Um, uh, the the SVO8 is not cheap enough. Totally reasonable. Pay less than five hundred dollars to be an extended beta tester. That's every machine nowadays. Yeah. Unfortunate fact of life lately. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay. Thanks for the notification, YouTube. I need to work on that. I need to work on not announcing things five minutes before I go live, for one. Uh, but also... Oh, that reminds me. Duh. Ruby will be mad at me if I didn't uh, if I didn't do that. One second. Let me pull it up so I can share it. All right. Dropping it in the chat in a second. Wait. My mouse is acting up. That's not good. Reload. Ready for Rocky Mountain? No, I've got to get this machine done. It's going out to the show. So uh, the entire stream is I'm, I'm ADHD and uh, either under medicated or not sufficiently medicated. You are completely correct. And I think that's what makes my streams special. <laughs> Um, newsletter. Newsletter is coming. Uh, we've talked about it on the stream a handful of times now about the idea of creating a newsletter, both to just be like a 3D printing news thing. I'm thinking there's going to be sections about like when Clipper gets updates, we'll, we'll put a little section in there of like announcing, hey, there's been an update to Orca Slicer this week or whatever. Um, and a uh, stream schedule is the goal. Not just myself, but others as well. Uh, so that folks can be better informed about stream schedules and know what's coming. Hopefully we're working out details. I'm going to be talking to everybody at Rocky mountain, uh, about that. So yes, link there. That's just the sign up newsletter. Get your, if you're interested in receiving it. Um, yeah, so you can get signed up and we will, we will be coming with that soon after Rocky mountain will probably get rolling. So everything, everything hinges on that show right now, which is always show life right before show is all about the show so thank you folks to anybody who signed up and hopefully it's worth your time we'll find out i think it'd be nice to do a print model of the week we have a whole list of things we want to include because most likely each week like there's not going to be new news every single week so it some weeks it might be like hey check out this really awesome model on printables uh some weeks it might be Here's this new technology that there's a patent out there about. Like, it's not meant to be a full-on blog. It's meant to be, like, snippets. We might end up making a blog that's associated with it where I might write articles and stuff. But for right now, it's meant to just be like, yeah. Like, maybe Joel, 3D Printing Nerd, put out a really cool video this week. And I'll put that in there. Just be like, hey, has anybody seen this? You should see this. Like, I don't want it to be just the Mandic Really newsletter. I want it to be a 3D printing newsletter. It's meant to be the Mandic Labs newsletter, but like, not just me. Uh, it's not meant to be my own self-promotion, so. Email digests are awesome. Yeah, like just trying to break, honestly, it's a lot of what I, sh I do on Twitter. Not a lot of what I do on Twitter, but some of what I do on Twitter where I reblog or repost when I see new news things or new products drop. I'll probably just save some of that stuff and put it in the newsletter and, and start trying to make connections with the companies that I already have connections with to like get announcements into the newsletter like maybe we've got a brand new product or a discount code this week in the newsletter so found the hot rod channel looks awesome thank you sad <laughs> kind of sad i don't make anything anymore but it exists okay oh uh, another thing i did on this build and had, i didn't mention the ldo kit comes with uh comes with black hardware or black coated hardware uh i switched to mostly stainless for pretty much anything visible that i had the hardware for like M2s for the rails. I didn't have any regular stainless M2s for some reason. I thought I did, but um, I replaced all the M3s with 
regular stainless, so they match the color aesthetic way better than the black hardware did. All right. Pico Bilical Strain Relief Mount going in place. Well, it's not really strain relief. Ah, not really strain relief. Let's move to the middle a little. I mean, that's a tight fit. Uh, have you tried Rad OS? Um, I have not tried Rad OS at all. Haven't tried it yet. Yet. And that's all I can say on that front. Uh, Clipper configurator with Mikkel, uh standard in the wrap has been also been added to support Vorons. Oh, cool. Okay, I might have to take the Pico Bilical off, the board off to get this on, but the one hole is kind of precluded, hidden by the, occluded by the uh, board. Just how it worked out when I designed this mount. So I'm gonna mount it, then mount the board. I haven't tried RadOS yet. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious to, so hopefully I will get the chance to soon. Uh, I've heard good things about like the configuration tools and such, how it can really help people streamline the process of setup, but... Okay, go. There we go. That's way better. Do you have a Discord server yet? No, but it's coming. Um, I do not yet. It's definitely coming. I held off for the longest time because I didn't want to moderate it, but now I've just got so many things going on with streaming and the newsletter coming. And I've, I didn't realize that so many people use Discord as like notification centrals, which does make sense. I just didn't realize it because I don't use it for that. Uh, but anyway, it's coming. Uh, I just got to figure it out. Old man needs to figure out Discord better. Yeah, I use Discord on a regular basis, but yeah. Uh, able to com configure entire Clipper with a visual web page. That's awesome. Kind of like a uh, maker, like the uh, Marlin side of maker, uh, MakerBot. Not MakerBot. No. Fuck. <laughs> what am I thinking of? MakerBase. MakerBase. I begrudgingly use this Discord. Honestly, I, I say that. Uh, started posting this in the hang Fabrico Hangout. Awesome. Thank you. Um, appreciate that. Um, yeah, so a Discord's coming. It's going to happen, but I need to find time to set it up and make sure I know. I don't want to send it live to the world without, like, knowing the proper ways to moderate things and whatever. Yeah. Another Discord to join. Yeah. Yeah. But that's part of the thing, too. Like, I kind of want to have, like, maybe a section of, like, uh, like builds or something we could put in the newsletter. Maybe maybe you could, like, if you built a machine like this, you want to show off. And you could put it on, you, there could be a sub-Discord, uh, you know, a Discord channel where you just submit your, your builds to be considered to put in the newsletter or something. So. It is tiring. Uh, it's tiring that you have to join a private Discord for support these days. I 1000% agree. I am really, 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 I like Discord for various things. I do not like Discord for support. I think it's a total miss on support. It, the search function is okay, and you can, I've recently learned how to use it better, but it's still not amazing. And a forum can be indexed and, uh, a forum can be indexed and found through Google and just works so nice. Uh, yes, I do still use a Deity shotgun microphone. That's what you're hearing me through right now. So, it's pretty much all I use. Uh, know a server that does mod submissions. Cool. And maybe we'll have like a, a user, you know, uh, maybe we can have a little section to, for uh, 3D printing builds or 3D projects as well. Um, Possibly, I don't know. Like, I do want to, I do want to highlight. We were talking about, like, I do want to highlight cool prints or cool projects. Sorry, I didn't understand. Don't care. Um, so potentially that we'll we'll see. I just don't want it to become like a, a shitstorm of like submissions all the time, because it's only going to be a weekly newsletter, and I can't have like ten things in each newsletter submissions or whatever, you know. So 
we got to figure that out. Okay. Uh, tool board is on there. I can make tool head connections. I guess. I might as well clean up this wiring a bit. It's a bit of a mess right now. So, let's see if I can get a little closer shot on this. Focus. There we go. Ask Steve, his server's done well. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to everybody when I'm at a, part of Rocky Mountain for me is gonna be chatting with, uh, with quite a few folks about various things coming up. I'm, I swear I'm glad my, my watch broke so I don't constantly get those notifications. Uh, yeah, reasonable. All right, so extruder bore or extruder goes down here. I don't know how well I can cleanly do this. I, I, so one thing I don't love about V zero size machines is like clean wiring at the tool head. I gotta play with this a bit to get it where I want it. But all right, we got hot end fan. Wow, that cable is not long enough for this. I mean, it is probably the way they intend to route it, but not the way I'm routing it. Uh, let me pull up Pico Bilical page. I don't think I have that pulled up yet. Uh, you reached out on Discord. Awesome. I will. Uh, I will. I'll get back to you when when I can. Uh, I yeah. I saw the new. Rocky Mountain thing on Discord, so. Okay, Pico Bilical Connections. Where's the tool head connections? Give me my diagram. Port definitions. No, that's port definitions. I want... Not configuration. I want to know my ports. Which ports are what? I can look on the PCBB, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay. All right, I'm just going to the GitHub. No, the GitHub is not the. I I know there's a pinout diagram of this damn thing. Um, how are you wiring a sequence? I'm going to wire a sequence to the X end stop. I'm going to wire a sequence. The uh, this board does have an X end stop on it, but there's it's a V0.2, so there's no end stop switch. So I'm going to use that one to control the. Uh, sequence. Well, I don't know if it's going to be controllable. It'll probably just be on all the time, which I'm fine with. What board are you using? Uh, SKR Pico, but I'm using a Pico Bilical. Oh, I think I'm in the... I am in the old instructions. Yep, there we go. It's in the 0 0.2 instructions. Ah... Uh, Sequins are weird for me on my EBB 36. It's either 100% uh, is off and zero is on. Huh? I uh, don't know how you have it wired or anything, but uh, weird. Okay, let's let's kind of parse these out. These yellow and black wires here are for the sequins. That's where I, I soldered up some wires to the sequins. Got hot hot end over there. Uh, our two fan or three fans. Uh, do I need to join the fans? Mm, no. So there are so opposite sides fans. Cool. So one fan connection. This second fan wire is so much longer than it needs to be. Ay, ay, ay. Wired correctly on two different machines, same thing. Weird. I believe you. I'm just weird. I believe you. Okay, hot end fan goes over here. I kind of want to get these positioned, and then I'll come back and cable manage them a little bit, I think. I just want to see what I'm working with as much as anything. Say, so like, this wire is way longer than it needs to be. I might shorten and re-terminate this one. Unknown yet. Uh, it's this fan. Eh, it's not that much longer, but it's definitely longer than it needs to be. 
All right, heater, e-motor. I think it's the middle port for the thermistor. I'm not seeing it on this diagram. Doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure it's this middle port for the thermistor. Oh, nope, I mixed it up. I put the thermistor, I put the hot end fan where the hot end thermistor goes. There we go. Can't wait for Nighthawk 36. Heart K is testing for LDO. Yeah, I'm interested to see what updates we get uh, or, or that in general, but I'm also not in love with what I've seen of the Nighthawk uh, stealth burner version so far, so I'm not 100% I'm not yet. All right. Um, I am definitely going to be coming back in and cleaning up this wiring, but I think for right now, I'm going to roll with it. I just wanted to be sure I don't need to extend any wires or anything. That all looks pretty good. And obviously, my LED, LED wires are longer than I need. Uh, what am I not liking about the Nighthawk Big Boy? Um, what I've seen so far, I haven't run one. I haven't done it myself yet. But the connector for the USB and power connection comes straight out the back of the board, which then puts it into interference territory with Z cable chain on a 2.4. Like I saw one person, I think Nero might have posted about it or reposted it or something where somebody has already ruined a cable on one because of the way it comes out. It was causing interference issues. It seemed like they didn't have it wired very nicely but I didn't really see a really clean way of doing it myself. So, uh, Ooh, the 36 will have a USB hub for the, on the board for the beacon connection. That is very intriguing to me. That could have fit really well on my Trident build. I'm going to have to talk to, to Jason next week. Uh, we might have to see what he can swing so I can get that done. Cause I don't want to be wiring that thing multiple times. Who knows? They're probably not ready yet. I do know my Milo is coming next week. Shipping next week. <clears throat> my Milo will be shipping next week. Uh, I talked to Jason yesterday. So when I get back from Rocky Mountain, uh, we will have a Milo to start building. I'm going to finish the Trident first, but... Uh, okay. I've got a... I gotta get the power connection in here. Uh, does anybody know if Hart K is gonna be at our, our Rocky Mountain? I don't know. I know Timmit will be. Uh, looking for no. Electronics and wiring. That's what I was looking for. Put the AC plug in. Should be. All right. I haven't talked to him, so I don't know, but. Uh, could be an issue with some overmolded case. Uh, yeah, that, there's all kinds of ways around that stuff. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. This, this can fit either direction. I'm kind of just debating which way I want to go with it. Eh, I think I'm going to go this way. That way, the switch is a little easier to reach around the corner. Okay. I can put my back panel in. My hex panel design. This is not going to be fun because those tools... Oh, I forgot to start the print on those tools. Uh, what was that about Alan's ADD streams? Yeah. Ugh. Let's get this rolling. There we go, filament loading. <laughs> we can make it a drinking game, but I'm not sure your your liver would make it. Yeah, I would not recommend. If if y'all's liver has to depend on on Alan not forgetting things, you're you're sorely mistaken for your survivability. All right, just extrude some filament. All right, so. It doesn't really matter if its tool is not going to be useful for this, unfortunately. 
Uh, uh, I usually watch these streams after the fact. They seem to be, they seem to take some time. Do you think the kits, more kits or 95% pre-builts are going to be um, more popular coming up? I, I can't say. I honestly don't know. Part of the thing is that building on a stream takes way longer than building it myself. Like, it, I, it took three streams to get to this point on this build. And then yesterday, no, the day before, Saturday, or that's Sunday, sometime in the last couple days, I flipped this thing over, disassembled the previous frame, took all the parts off of it, and swapped it onto this frame. And still had to fight all the nuts. Squirrel! Yes. Um, so, it's, uh, it took a lot less time off stream. You know, that's kind of a thing. So. <laughs> Alright, Domenico, you're out of here. I will, I will talk to you soon. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, hold up, are crabs vegan? No, crabs are not vegan. Um... So, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I think machines, I don't know about Trudon. Trudons have been around for a while and really hasn't caught on, in my opinion. Like, I've seen a handful of people talk about them and such, but I don't know. I don't I, I don't think that's really going to catch on so much. But the Soval SV08, when you got a name like Soval behind it, I think that has some solid potential to be popular. And... I, I think that's going to cut into things a lot more than Trudon ever did. Uh, there will always be people who love to build and tinker. Those who just want to buy and print. Soval and Trudon match a particular use case as does Voron. Totally. Like, there are plenty of machines you can buy that will do what a Voron will do. That's oh, only asking because of the shirt. Yeah, I, no, I, I was getting there. It's a video game shirt. Uh, Gordon's Crab Shack. Half-Life. It's the head crabs that would, like, jump on and latch onto people and turn them into zombies. Yeah, it's a video game shirt. Okay. These are going to be kind of annoying to, uh... Hey, that one dropped right in. These, the tool's not going to work because they have to go through the back panel, so I can't access these. So we're going to find out how well this works. Ah! These things are... Sent you an image of the Nighthawk 36 on Discord. Awesome. Yeah, see, stuff like this is a really good point. Of, like, this is part of why I kind of want a Discord. Is, like, these things where you folks are telling me about stuff during stream, it'd be really good to just have a Discord where we could chat like that. Um, like, I understand I could just open up putting links on the stream, but I worry about the, the spammers coming in and whatever and me missing it, so... We'll figure it out, but... Headcrabs are terrible things. Half-Life Alex headcrabs still haunt me. I've never played Half-Life Alex. I have a Quest 2, and I could link it to my computer. And I should, but yeah. So. Okay. I gotta line up where these are gonna be. <clears throat> Down here. In the middle. And at the top. Pretty top. See, that lines up pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. All right, all right. Carrie, welcome. Busy day. As big as busy release day, yeah. Oh, I was saying earlier, uh, Soval's supposed to be sending me an SV08, um, but they were out of them. <laughs> so they said they're going to send me one when they get them back in stock. So, you know, it's going to have to wait till like, shipping inventory for folks who buy one when they come, I think. So, I will hopefully have a stream about the SV-08 when it's actually available to buy. So, I guess that's a thing. Uh, Half-Life 2 was a big deal back when it dropped. Uh, if you were around when it, back, when it dropped. Ouch. Thank you. It didn't need to be called out like that. I did not need to be called out like that. Don't forget the little tool print again. Yeah, I'm not. It's just not useful right now. So, uh, let's send it. 
How long is this supposed to take to print? A whopping five minutes. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna slow that way the hell down because I don't want to. I don't want to overheat it. Ugh. Oh, some of us can remember Half Life. Yeah. What's it mean if I uh, beta tested EQ1? What's that? I don't know what game that is. Probably not one I played. Half-Life 2 was released in 2004. Yep. Yep. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know why my mouse is acting up. So. Oh, I do know why my mouse is acting up. It's because I had to plug my HDMI switcher into my computer directly. Uh, one of the first real MMOs. It means you're old then. <laughs> I can remember 3DFX cards. Hell yeah, my Voodoo 3 was uh, nice emojis. Awesome, thank you. You know, you're the first person I've seen use them. Oh, EverQuest 2. Oh, EverQuest 1. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I never played. I was never much into MMOs, but I was around in that era. Um, 3DFX. Uh, my Voodoo 3 was the first... Voodoo 3 3000 was the first graphics card I bought for myself for my first build. Uh, I was a freshman in high school when HL1 was released. When was that? I don't remember. 99? 98? How old are you? 38. I am 38 years old. I graduated high school in 2003. So, yep. Okay. A little older than Steve. Okay. Yeah. Steve's got a few years on me, so. Yeah. Had a Voodoo 2 with 8 megabytes of RAM. Oh, hell yeah. Youngin. <laughs> Had a ZX Spectrum, I think, a lot of, a lot older. Eh. I mean, I had. H having a ZX Spectrum doesn't uh, necessarily date you, Carrie. Now... Having a ZX Spectrum when it was new, that's a different story. Because <laughs> I had 486s and, you know, all these things. Found it, a uh, picture of Nighthawk. Awesome. Learned to program on a, Z a ZX. Hey, these are going in really easy. Apparently, I just needed to stream this whole thing and it would go smoothly. No, it's actually... I think it's actually that... Uh, but because these screws aren't going through long pieces, I can kind of angle them into the things, into the nuts, and that's really helping. I had to say something. Now they're not going well. Now they're not going in well. Well, that's back in the day before video games were like a multi-billion dollar industry, too. Greetings from Spain! Welcome, Rafael! Welcome, welcome! It was tech-supported gateway when the Voodoo came out. Everyone in the call center works... Uh, reason to go play on the training systems. <laughs> fun fact, uh, fun fact, my first GPU that I bought was a Voodoo 3 3000 and I put it in the family gateway computer. I put it in the family gateway 2000, like uh, actually uh, LGR just did a video on the exact computer. It was my family computer at that time. And he thought the video was gonna flop and it was gonna like just a dumb thing. But to me, it was like so nostalgia because it was like the family computer that I had that I first started upgrading and whatever. Had a, uh, I think I had a 266 Pentium 2 slot one card or slot one CPU in it. First computer was Amiga. I had 486s and, and older computers before that, but, but yeah. Cutting windows into regular cases. Oh yeah, it was back when modding a computer was really modding a computer I did that in my high school metal shop class I modded my uh, my case in various ways mounted blow holes in it and yeah 
Ah, shit. This one just came out. Damn it! Getting this to sit back down in there is going to be a nightmare through the hole. Let me see if I just shake the frame and it'll go in. That totally worked. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't. It fucking it moved up. Uh, my first water-cooled rig had a 76 Chevy heater core radiator. So did mine. Uh, my first one had a, I think it was a Camaro heater core, if I remember right. I'm probably making that up, but yeah, mine had a heat of cat. I, I guess I should find a picture of my old system. That was a, my first water cooled rig was, oh hell, I forget. Uh, thanks for doing this build series, dude. I've got my frame ready to go. Working on color choices, sorting out beefier MGN rails. Awesome. Fabrico has the MGN nine carriage for you. Um, I got one here somewhere for my build that I'm going to be doing soon. Uh, remember the inter mineral oil bath uh, coolers? Yeah, my I actually on the Mandic Really channel I have an old video where I disassembled a Maze Two from Danger Den back in the day, uh, where like I I heated it up and I split it apart so I could desolder it and like look at the insides and just show it to people. Just a maze, but yeah. Damn it! This one lifted up and now it's standing straight up in the extrusion and I can't did I send that to print or not print uh, I can't get it to roll back down in through this hole ay 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 I'm gonna try roll like wiggling it again nope damn it I gotta take all of them back out and get it do it again. <sighs> magnet. I was using the magnetic tip on a, that, that hex wrench is magnetized. It just, the problem is that you've got to like lift it up a little bit and get it to roll into place. And I can't do it through the hole. Oregon State. Cool. Uh, Ooh, Fabrico upgrade kit coming, and you're printing Cookie Cat ABS parts. Awesome, Critter. Okay. Yeah, this one's just... Watch, it's going to fall right in easy here, I bet. Yep, there you go. I kind of have to get under it and get it to roll in, and then it freaking goes. But, oh well. Oh, well. At least these are going smoother than most of the rest of them did. So, had a DIY phase cooler too. Oh, I, I was always so close to messing with a DIY phase cooler setup, and I just could never bring myself to do it. We had like an old AC unit in the garage that I was like so tempted to rob and start uh, hacking apart. Just never bring myself to do it. Anybody remember... Uh, was anybody ever, uh, anybody ever tried bong coolers? I do not mean bong coolers for water cooling. Those were the shit. They were so dumb. They were cool. They worked, but boy, were they dumb. Mine was, I ran a bucket bong. So I had a five gallon bucket from like Lowe's uh, with a shower head in the top of it. And then I cut a hole in the top of the lid with a fan that blew into it. And my water pump lived inside of there. And it dripped. Uh, LTD did a, one a couple years ago. Yeah, I've seen that. I was tempted to, to redo one. I've been really tempted to like rebuild an old school water cooling setup. Um, posted a video in the Hangout channel. Cool. Um, I I meant I was really tempted to like rebuild a brand new uh, bong cooler in like twenty, you know, twenty twenty whatever, uh, and put it on like my Ryzen nine. 5950X and see what it did. Overclocking was awesome with phase cooling. Yeah. I had a, I had an, a Thunderbird. Or no, it was a Thunderbird? I had an AMD Duron 600 or a Thunderbird 600. I think it was a Thunderbird 600. That with just water cooling, just the heater core, regular water cooling loop with a Maze 2 water block on it, 
I got over 1.1 gigahertz. It was the first time I ever had anything over one gigahertz. And it was like a, it was like a double overclock, like a two time. Uh, car Thunderbird was cartridge style, I think. No, thun yes and no. There was a crossover there. There was that weird period where they had slot A and socket A, I think they were. Uh, so like you could get a Duron or a Thunderbird on a slot, which I did have one of those at one point. Uh, but then I went to socket and the socket one is the one that uh, a Thunderbird 600. I was able to get to like a 1.13 gigahertz or something through some weird like multiplier and front side bus overclocking. That was back when it wasn't just hit a button and it auto calibrates your, your setup. And I don't, I still run water cooling on my, my editing computer. My water, my computer I use every day is water cooled, but I don't overclock it. Celeron 300 with a Delta cooler got around 790. That's it. Oh, this Celeron 300, it's back in the day, the Celeron 300 was like the king of overclocking. So silly that, that Intel's budget product was so good. In that respect, anyway. You still have almost everything you ever got. Ugh. I've had to part with way too many things. And now that we're talking about moving, Ruby and I literally started today going around the house and like looking at what's coming with us and what's not. And oh yeah, yeah, I am. I'm dying inside. I'm like I'm a pack rat, and I'm like so dying. Come on, you can do it. Yes. No. Yes. All right. I got all of them in. Yay. Remember the AMD pen lead trick? Totally. I'm pretty sure that Thunderbird I had to do that on. I'm pretty sure to overclock that Thunderbird I had to do the, the lead trick. Yep. I remember. Thunderbread and Thoroughbred sound similar but we're some years apart. Slot A, then socket A, I think. I had a slot A as well. Yeah, no, I, I know there were there were like different variants. I know Duron, I know Duron, the Duron series definitely crossed over from slot to socket. I'm pretty sure Thunderbird did too, but I don't, I don't remember exactly. But yeah. That, that was that time where things were like rapidly exploding. Any early Athlon 64 adopters? I forget. I know I had one. I can. I forget when. Uh, saved money in mowing lawns and built an Athlon XP. Thought it was the best thing in the world. Yeah. I remember. I remember my buddy and I went into Philadelphia. We lived outside the city at the time. We went into Philadelphia to an AMD event. They hosted an AMD event in a parking lot. It's like a fever dream memory, but I know it happened. They held a parking lot event. Uh, you are right, the Thunderbird did cross over. Awesome, cool, I thought I was. Uh, I think it was Athlon 64, I think it was. It was either Athlon 64 or it was the launch of like the Thunderbird. I think it was Athlon 64. Um, where they hosted a parking lot event where they set up a stage and a screen and they gave away a ton of motherboards and CPUs and stuff. It was the weirdest thing. It happened all across the country, to my knowledge, but we had one here in Philadelphia and it was so strange. Uh, managed to uh, burn a, an Athlon 64, yeah. I, I managed to damage one of my, either a Duron or a Thunderbird because remember the uh, the Thunderbirds and the if anybody's not familiar, like nowadays you'll talk about direct die cooling. Well, those CPUs were direct die. There was no heat spreader on them. You didn't have to take the heat spreader off. It didn't exist. So your die was exposed and bare, and so you had to be really careful when putting your cooler on it because it used the spring clip that they still use today, and you could crack the die. It was so easy to crack them. Yeah, one time. Did I crack one? I cracked one. I cracked one. Uh, I think it was my Duron I cracked, actually. I think I cracked the core of my Duron uh, by, like, shifting this, the cooler wrong. And then I 
I replaced it with a Thunderbird, and then I got this like shim. It was like a an anodized shim that you put on top of it, so you couldn't put the cooler wrong. It was like a, a, a spacer plate that kept you from rocking the cooler. Yeah. Friend of mine had his die chipped. I also killed a motherboard once because those back then when you had to put the coolers on, you basically had to use a screwdriver um, and you had to like force it down with a screwdriver. Well, if the screwdriver slipped off the clip, you would jam your screwdriver into a motherboard. I killed a motherboard doing that once. I forget what I forget what build that was, but how's it going? We are going typical ADD fashion. We're talking about early 2000s, late 90s computers. <laughs> Okay, back panel is in. Uh, there are a couple of springs we gotta go in, or a couple of more screws and nuts that have to go in place, but yeah. Luckily, PC parts are more durable and idiot-proof now, way more. Uh, so glad AMD went to AM, AM5. Yeah, the AM4 has always pulled off the CPU with the cooler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it managed to, to short an SP Live. Oops. Okay. So I've got this panel screwed in, but there are, my design for the panel does have new type of idiot. Yep. Oh yeah, there's definitely new types of idiots out there. ID 10 T's, whatever you want to say. Sure. Can't amount of managing how much shit I would have destroyed back then. Yeah, that was definitely the days where like, it was really understandables when you, uh, when you screwed stuff up. I'm still on AM4 with the 15. I'm still on AM4 as well. Uh, I've got a, I've got a 5950X in my computer. I just can't justify the upgrade to a uh, 7000 series. I would like to, I really would, but, um, I want to go to, uh, I want to go to, what do you call it? Um, error, Threadripper. I did 7950 and love it. Yeah, I would really like that. I would, um, Currently, no need for more. I don't really need more. The 5950, I have a 5950X and a RTX 3090 Ti. And honestly, they're as much as I need right now. They get the job done. I'm starting to see some slowdowns as like Premiere gets updates to maybe work with newer computers and stuff. Like it's slowing down a little bit. Um, but I, I'm out of PCIe lanes is my problem. I really need to go to Threadripper because I need more PCIe connection. I am completely at maxed out on my lanes on my build. And I actually had to take a, a drive out. I had to take an SSD out to get to that point. Um, like the stream, I would love to have a 4K stream. I have a 4K capture card in my computer, but it only has one HDMI input. So like I wouldn't be able to do a multi-camera stream, but I can't put multiple capture cards in because... I am out of PCIe lanes. Dumb shit. I really need a Threadripper for my purposes, but I get... Uh, it's so expensive. So expensive. Okay. There are a couple of screws my back panel has. A couple screws that go through uh, into the top and bottom extrusions. So that's what I'm looking at now. This frame sitting like this is not being helpful though. If you build a Threadripper PC, be sure to stream it. Oh, I'm sure I will. I'll have to milk the hell out of that. If I do, it's so, exp so expensive. I will have to milk that project if I do it. So, okay, let's try and get, ah, bah, 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 bah. out of building PCs, move to Apple Arm for home and work. Uh, I was building PC. It was like 3D printers and never felt like I was done. Yeah, reasonable. And I've considered Apple. Um, Ruby has a MacBook Pro. And honestly, I, I tried out a MacBook Pro. It was loaned. Uh, B&H loaned me one. I used it at, at Smurf. Um, and I really like it. I really like MacBooks. It's not good enough for my daily computer uses, but I do like them. Um Yeah, I don't know. Uh, would you potentially make a custom loop for it or AIO? I don't do AIOs. Custom loop. I, it's the one thing I still do kind of enthusiast, you know? Mitch, you like the white 
frame. Thank you. I think it was definitely the right call. Yeah, I tried out the M3 MacBook Pro, but only the base model one. And it, it was great for... Um, it was great for web surfing, for like light stuff, but it could not edit my videos. Could not edit my videos. But for like day-to-day, -day, just emails, web surfing, maybe even a little bit of Fusion 360, I, I designed some stuff in Fusion on that laptop and it worked fine. Um, uh, just drilled some holes so you could pass some LED wires through. You know, uh, Ballistic, I was considering putting notches or something into this panel for that purpose because I'm running a Nevermore and I'm running the auxiliary part cooling fan and I got to run the wires somewhere. I was heavily debating doing a remix of my own design uh, for that, but uh, I should pr put that out there as an option for people to do. I should. Oh, right. I printed those tools. I'm, I'm messing around here trying to start the screw and I don't have the tool. Can look into a refurb M1 Air. Honestly, for my day-to-day -day purposes, I think that's what I'm going to do. Look for an M1 or M2 Air. Um, just for my like, daily driving like, emails and travel laptop. So... All right. Let's try this little tool. This silly little tool thing. So this is supposed to like get underneath the nut so I can lift it up and flatten it out a little bit. I uh, don't know how well it's gonna work. We're gonna find out. M1 kind of sucked and get an M2. I mean, honestly, Ruby has a M1 uh, MacBook Pro. It's a Pro, not the base M1. She has a M1 uh, MacBook Pro with the M1 Max processor in it. That thing's great. I haven't edited a video on it though, so I can't say for sure. Seems pretty good. Okay, so this tool fits down into the extrusion and gets under this nut. University auctions, that's a good idea. Get the screw out so I can get this lined up. As long as you get a Pro or Max, yeah. Not the base M1, 2, or 3 or all, yeah. Understandable. Honestly, that, that base M3 was pretty solid for most things. Like I said, I used it in Fusion. Even with only the base model 8 gigabytes of RAM, it still was pretty good. It just couldn't do my videos. Just couldn't edit my videos. I knew it wouldn't be able to, but I just wanted to play with it. Okay. I'm trying to get under this with this tool, and it's kind of not helping much. Yeah, that really did not help much. Hmm. Okay. Let's try and just put this on here, right here where I can see it. Hey, there we go. I was able to get it on? N no, this, these, uh, ballistic, we were talking about earlier, these extrusions don't use M3 nuts. Uh, they're a different extrusion from DLL PDF that have to use these rectangular nuts. They have to use these rectangular shaped nuts. Damn it, I can't hold on to this. They have to use these and, um, they sit crooked in the extrusion. So when you try to start a screw in them, it just tries to cross thread. So this tool that I'm using is supposed to make it uh, sit flush and flat and pick it up a little bit. And it definitely is, it, it's working, that's for sure. Now my tool's stuck under it, but get out of there. It's stuck under the nut. Ay, ay, ay. Cheater tool. Absolutely. Any experience with Copy Master 3D kits? Never heard of them. 
really want to make a V0 without extrusions. It's the most frustrating part. I mean, you could. I start, I mean, that's kind of like a, a little bit like a Brendan builds his, uh, what's he call his? Uh, use the LDO slide-in nuts. Yeah, the LDO slide-in nuts don't even work in this frame. They just spin round. That's why these ones are rectangular shaped. So, wait till you build a PFA printer. Yeah. Yeah. Fell off my little one, two, three block here. Uh, I can't get this damn thing out of there. That tool, Copy Master have boron kits. Never heard of them. Guess I'm out of the kit game at the moment. Come on, come on, get out of there. This tool is stuck underneath this thing now, completely. But always seems like they're sold out. Hmm. Printer for ants. Oh, 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 yeah. I don't know if the screw is passing through the nut making it stick. I don't think so. Ay, ay, ay. It's become warm with the printer, yes. Get out of there. There we go. Just had to really yank it. That's all. Just had to really yank it. Okay, I'm going to line this up a little bit, tighten this. I'm going to loosen the back panel before I do that. Chose too small of a hammer. All right, tighten this down now. Cool. One. One. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Did I change camera angles? No. Okay, microphone out of my face. Percussive maintenance, yeah. Trying not to percussively maintain this one. Trying not to. There we go. All right, let's use the tool again. Maybe the tool's got to wear in a little bit. This definitely sold me on the Cookie Cat ABS. It'll be at the Cookie Cat booth at uh, Rocky Mountain, so. Uh, it went on a little easier this time, so I'm hopeful it'll come off a little easier. I think it just, the, the nub on it had to wear in a little, probably. Hopefully. Um, sample packs of a sleeving I mentioned came in. Awesome, hopefully. Hopefully that color does work out well for you. Eh. Keep slipping off a damn one, two, three. Come on. There we go. Now I think I can get this out of here. Uh, which sample packs? A, um, he's referring to, what's it called? It's, I get a, the sleeving I use on my builds. The uh, braided sleeving. MDPC. MDPC. So they've got a range of colors. So I got blue ones and gr blue and gray for the Trident build. Um, have you already talked about the Creality K2? Nope. I also haven't watched any content about it. I know it exists. That's it. Eh. Nope. Still got to pull yank this one. Still got to yank this one. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it broke. <laughs> you pain in my ass. Might be per percussively maintaining this in a second. So about that tool. Neat idea. Not working so well in execution. It's It must be just too thick. It's getting stuck underneath the nut. 
Um, uh, if you ever get time, look at the stuff Mod My Mods carries. Uh, it's the only misleading material I use. I think that's MDPC as well. I get mine from, I usually get it from Titan Rig, the computer, like mod place. Um, but I'm pretty sure Mod My Mods sells uh, MDPC as well. Pretty sure. There we go. Good thing I printed multiple of these. Let's get under the tool so I can get it the hell out of this hole. All right. How This reminds me how tedious the V0 can be. The typical V0 is not this tedious. It's these extrusions that make it more tedious, in my opinion. Come on. All right. All right, got that one tight. Barely screw the bolt. Yeah, that's what I did on that side. It was barely threaded in there and it just got stuck under it. Most of the stuff is made by dark side. Okay, I'll look at it then. Could be interesting to have some more options. Always looking for more options because, like, I sleeved, I sleeved the the bed cables, uh, the z-axis stuff on this thing, with this pink that I had. But it's not a it's not a good match for this build. It's just the only pink I had, so I'm going with it. But it's not ideal. All right. Okay, let's get this out of here. Two more of those to put in. Weird, frame sounded weird for a second. Oh, frame PCB took a dump on yours, the Pico Bilical, like the Pico board. That stinks. I'm not 100% on the whole thing yet, but Bestagons look look nice. Thank you. This design's available for downloads on thangs.com slash mandic really. <laughs> uh, let me grab one of the other tools and we'll give it a try again. I'm going to sand it a little bit. I've got some sandpaper back here. Try and make it a little easier. All right, let's try this again, again, with a new tool, new modified tool. Okay, it's on the tool. Line it up. Screw. I'm gonna try and just. Get a thread in it. Just get a thread in it. When I'm sure it's tight, uh, starting, I'll take the tool out. Cool. All right. Just started. Tool feels pretty free. Come on. Come on. It's the nub on the tool I think is the problem. I think the nub on the tool is just too, too strong. I've got a third one. It's like too tall. Mm. Wow, it just will not come out of there. Sand the nub off. Yeah, I'm going to once I get it out of here. <laughs> I get why the nub's there, but I don't think it's really, uh, I don't think it's necessary.
Because like the nub fits into the hole and it just, yeah. I mean, it could be down to the material that I'm printing it with. It could be down to the te the printer, who knows, slicing parameters. Well, it came out. Did it break? No. Let's sand the nub a little. Sand the nub a little. I think the nub's creating more problems than it solves. Yeah, I think I do agree. All right, that feels pretty good. Didn't take much. It's I think it's only like a 0.2 millimeter tall nub, but it was enough. Yeah, now I can slip. I can slip pretty easily now. And I'm going to need to because this side I already have the Nevermore in, so there's not much room for me to work. There's not much room in this side for me. All right, started. I don't even know if there's enough room for me to fit this tool at all on this side. Just. There is just. All right. Uh, what is this for? I don't remember. It's for this particular frame. This frame is from the company DLL PDF, and it's different extrusions than your typical V0 frame. That's why you're not familiar with it. voice a vocal spray give myself some vocal spray oh i'm not looking forward to losing my voice at rocky mountain but i will i'm gonna i'm sure that Come on, get in there. I don't know why this one's being tight. Little Blackberry Brandy does wonders. Yeah, well, I don't, uh, does uh, DFH use the same style frame? I don't know. I think they used to use DLLP uh, DF frames, but I don't know. Oh, why is this? This M3 is really tight in this hole. It doesn't make any sense. What free 3D software do you all use? Do you mean design software, like CAD software? I use Fusion 360, personally. Uh, it is free to get started. They have been reducing the features you get over time with the free plan, but it's still free to use. And I pay for it now uh, as I use it for my business. But yeah, that's what I use. Well, now it's just Fusion, Autodesk Fusion. Uh, was it West 3D that used DLL PDF for their Micron kits? No idea. Uh, my Micron Plus from DL was from them. Okay. Let's try this again. There we go. Now you're going the way you need to go. And I think this is good. Yay, that one came out fine. Just had to sand the nub off. Uh, you also did no drop nuts and preloaded. Yeah, I banked on using these, unfortunately, and I didn't preload. So I rushed through and I was like, oh, shit, great. I wish I'd done some preloads. I'm going to throw some preloads in the... Uh, in the, oh damn it, that one actually didn't work. I just lost the nut. It just popped out of there. Why? Okay, let's get this tool out of here. Need a set of RGB side panels like Timmet has, yeah. They would fit pretty well on this build, except for the lights being in the way of them, but, or the, the uh, fans, the Nevermore and the auxiliary fan. This could definitely use more RGB than it's going to have, but yeah. For these frames, it's better to preload. Yeah, do some printed. Fine. What I would do if I do another one of the... If I build another one of these frames at some point, I will take a test piece, print a bunch of no drops, put them in, and then like figure out which ones work well in here, and that's what I would do, but... 
Uh, oh, you have them, but you don't. You have them in your store. Cool. I just got one of your. I actually just got one of your boards in from Fabrico, the tiny fan. Okay, you can tell me you're here. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Error. Tiny fan. I know I had a question about it. Because the Trident has a lot of fans in it. The Trident has a lot of fans. Oh. Unimportant. I think my question was going to be, does it require 5 volts or not? Because originally I didn't think I was going to be needing the 5 volts. But now I'm going to run some RGB off of it. So I do need 5 volts. So that was my question. Never mind. Uh, did I sign, find a solution for those splitters? Not exactly. I started working on designing my own, but I have no idea what I'm doing designing PCBs. So uh, there's that. Okay, let's try this again. You can run 24 volt and step it down to 12 volt. Yeah, because so I've got on the Trident, I've got 5 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt fans. Um, yeah, but if you need 5 volt, you need 5 volt to it. Cool. Okay, now this one's properly started. I don't know why it didn't start. It slipped out before. Okay. Great. Now all these screws are in. It'll also auto step. Uh, yeah, I knew it steps down to 12 volt because I do have a couple 12 volt fans in there uh, that I was intending that I might power it with. I'm also running a Leviathan, which can step down, uh, can do 12 volt. I don't know. It can't do 5 volt, though. It can only do 5 volt for the LEDs. It doesn't do 5 volt fans, the Leviathan, that is. But most of my fans are 12 volt. I think the only 5 volt fans I have are the only 5 volt fan I have is for the Zoll, the, the hot end fan. So I got to figure that out because the EBB36 can't do 5 volt for that. But yeah, I will rant for days about modelers not orienting their parts. I know a certain YouTuber feels the same. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> As far as the other splitters are concerned, I will hit you up after stream. We'll chat. We'll chat. Cool. Okay. This thing is fully in. Uh, five volts only really needed if you want to control RGB. Yeah. So I am going to use that to control RGB. So I do need the five volt, but I did get a five volt power supply. Now I've got to package that because I didn't expect to, but whatever. Whatever. Okay. Now where are we at? Got the back panel in. We got the Pico umbilical board on the tool head. Pew, pew, pew. Motors are in, blah, blah, blah. I think we can go on to electronics now. I think. Get the Pico board in, probably. Get the SKR board in. And the Pi. And the, uh, the power supply, too. Oh, yeah. I, for I, I forgot. I haven't put a. Uh, you know what? I should do that right now while I say that. I have not put the Bowden tube in for the tool head yet. Uh, $68 a month for Fusion if you buy the full. That's ridiculously overpriced. I don't pay that much, and I, I, I pay for it. What you got to do with Fusion if you're going to buy into it for the commercial plan is pay a year and look out for a sale. They're always running a sale. Or often running a sale. Like, I just re-upped. Free from the wife. Oh, you lucky. Um, I just re-upped my plan. I actually canceled my plan. And then took the savings of the sale they had. And then re-redid my plan. So, yeah, I only paid like 400 for this year. I think, I think 680 is the full price that, like, one of those, like... It's full price a few days out of the year, and most of the time it's on sale. I also know they raised the price, so maybe I'm wrong about that. They did raise the price this year. 
don't know. Hopefully when I move, I can talk to somebody over there and ask them what the heck's going on. Because Autodesk is based in Portland. Their headquarters is in Portland. All right, I got to get this extruder off of here and put a Bowden reverse, or well, the, the inner, in between Bowden. What's the name for that? We call it Bowden, but like, there should be a specific name for the Bowden tube that runs between the extruder and the hot end in a direct drive extruder. I vote we need a name. Is there no perpetual license? Nope, it is a, it is service, software as a service, unfortunately. Nope, it is software as a service. Tube. <laughs> okay, tube. Well, it could be reverse. Vote guide tube. I like that. I like guide tube. All right, make sure it's good and down into there. Mini Bowden. Percussive tap, tap, tap. Make sure it's down in there. Bandic tube. That's weird. <laughs> Even I'll say that's weird. All right, make sure I'm marking this. I don't think it pen's working right. Bowden taint. The grundle of the, the hot end. The, the hot end grundle. All right, measure that. 19 millimeters there. Yeah, 19 millimeters there. Would you miss uh, a lot of ADD? You missed a lot of ADD. That's about it. <laughs> uh, this side is awful tight. I wondered about that. I'm gonna use a, a four millimeter screw or a bit. Use a four millimeter bit and clean out that hole just a little bit. So the tube fits in a little tighter hidden Bowden or hidden tube all right hidden tube not bad not bad okay well you fit in there nicer now yes you do heat break PTFE yeah too clinical the colon <laughs> I mean it is right before you extrude I think tank tube wins. <laughs> okay. Software as a service does have its its pros and cons. It does. Like the days of, you know, having to wait for updates to fix things are gone, which is a positive. Like I'm not I'm not a urethra. Well, I mean, that's kind of more fitting. Colon's probably the most fitting. Ideally getting constant updates, many perpetual licenses designed around trying to get you to upgrade anyway. Yeah, totally. Totally. I don't know. As somebody who makes their living with software on various services of software companies, it's a cost of doing business for me. I use the Adobe Creative Cloud. I use Autodesk Fusion 360 or Fusion. It's just Autodesk Fusion. I know there's some others I use like it, for my job. I, I don't care that much. Like, sure, I'd love to spend less. But then I also think about like people like always always say things like, oh, you know, I wish Photoshop wasn't so uh, expensive with their monthly service costs. I've been on the Creative Cloud. I did the math not too long ago. Um. Uh, I, I did the math not too long ago for the Adobe Creative Cloud and how much I have paid in the like five plus years that I've been using it at, for my business. And I realized that over that time span with the monthly charges, I have only paid as much as like two years of Photoshop would have cost me 15 years ago. Because like Photoshop, when you had to buy Photoshop... A license was like a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, it was everybody pirated it because it was so expensive. Well, now service is a, a software as a service version of it, Creative Cloud. I have only paid, you know, 
the math works out that I'm not actually paying that much and I'm still getting the full Creative Cloud, not just Photoshop, you know? Eh. I understand for hobbyists, that's really, really hard. I get that. <laughs> is your wife a teacher? I'm getting that your wife is a teacher. <laughs> oh, is our local uh, Adobe user group manager? Nice. Okay, 26.5 millimeters, I think, is what I'm looking for here. So I'm going to go... I don't know if anybody else does this, but I... Carrie, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being here, as always. Much appreciated. Um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I always cut my taint tubes um, a hair long so that the extruder and the hot end kind of sandwich them really tight together. Uh, I always add like a half or a millimeter at least. I paid for all Adobe CS4 or CS5 once. Oh my God, so expensive. Yeah. Oh, you got the whole creative suite. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Give it a little nip with a... a... You like a long taint. Yeah, I, I do. You know, hey. This stream is devolving quickly. Okay, that's in. Now this side. Did I do my math right? I feel like I might have done my math wrong. Because that looks awfully long. Nope, it fit in there nicely. Alright. Remember, remember paying $900 just for Acrobat. Jeez. Not making stuff to sell. See, I, that's, I understand. Like, for hobbyists, I understand. It is, it's a hard pill to swallow. I do get that. Um, Adobe costs our marketing department like 10k because of all the licenses we have Whew. yeah like I totally get when you're not doing it for a job it is a lot harder to justify I do get that and and I commiserate because like I didn't start on a my business didn't start you know being profitable for sure it was not easy for me to decide to, to go to using Adobe products and then Fusion and starting to pay and all that. Um, but I needed to. to. To grow the way I wanted to, I needed to. And it's just where I ended up. But I was trying to do a business. So I do get it. I do. On shape is free if you don't mind that your models are public. And that's, I, I mind. Personally, I mind. But, you know. I think there's there's ways to have control on Fusion on Auto Shape is but is that paying to get the like version control? Why is this being t weird? Oh, that's not nicely lined up. Why? Why are you not nicely lined up? Loosen up these screws. If I didn't put that that taint tube Bowden thing in, I would have forgotten. They are public if people can find the name. Okay. Well, that yeah. Okay. A couple more screws for the Pico board to get in place. Uh, back in place and we can move on to the rest of the important electronics. Cool. All right, back panels in. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna VHB my boards and stuff to the to the back panel. I wanted to design mounting for them, but I, I don't think I'm gonna bother. Because I'm gonna put cooling fans on them uh, and I need the clearance. Clearance, Clarence. 
right. LDO wiring. I want to look at what they're recommending, stating. Blah, blah, blah. Mains wiring. Mount the power supply so that's all accessible. Sure. Uh, hi all to all 2.4 owners. Is there a tip for getting better acceleration values for Y? Can't get above 6,000 where X is already at 11,000. Your Y axis is going to be more affected by your overall gantry because you got to think your Y axis is moving your whole gantry. So lighter weight, um, checking the print quality or the, the belt path tracking of everything on that. With, with X, you only have your tool head moving. So there's a lot less to move there and a lot less mass moving, whereas your Y, everything is going. So start looking at your motion system related to that and maybe looking at cutting weight would be my recommendation if you're trying to improve beyond 6,000. Uh, what size too? That's a good point. If it's a 350, it might just be where you're at. That does make sense too. Yep. Uh, ba -ba -ba. All right, we can put the power supply in, I guess. Just use VHB tape, as we do. 300. Uh, you should be able to get over that with a 300. I would think, expect, believe. Okay. This sits on the damn tool head when I flip it over. Not cool. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, power supply time. Got the, what is it, the Monsun or Moon Sun? More Sun. Morn Sun. Morn Sun. Power supply because this has the higher wattage bed in it. So. Uh, used eSun ABS Plus, which isn't recommended. No, music. The music's just probably too quiet. I turned it down too far. Yeah. Not mean well, it'll explode. Well, it needs to be higher power because the PCB bed heater that they use in this kit is higher wattage. What is it? Like a hundred? It's not a hundred, is it? I forget. I forget what it is, but it's higher wattage. So they they need higher power, higher watt power supply. 20 millimeters off this front face they want me. I've got something for that. Uh, 20 millimeter calibration cubes. Still takes a while to heat up. Yeah, and it's still a tooty bed with not of that much power. 20 millimeter calibration cubes I will use as my spacer to locate my power supply. Look at that magical there's an add-on uh, add-on for clipper to let you do so. uh, speaking of VHB tape any clean way to remove it I don't have a good answer for you I've never really had a problem with just lightly scraping it off with a plastic scraper and then alcoholing up the residue personally but uh, VHB time Pretty sure some came with the kit, but I'm just gonna use my own. I shall use my own. Scissors. Scissors. AC, AC 100 watt takes all of the uh, four minutes. Eh. Envious, envious, but I'm I'm fine with how long the the zero bed takes. Personally, doesn't generally bother me because I'm usually baking a chamber anyway. Uh, I'm generally, uh, you know, heating it up well in advance, trying to warm everything up. Do you plan on building an ERCF V2? Not really. Not currently. Uh, I'm sure I probably will at some point, I guess, but. 
Uh, my small printers video was a big motivator for your Pandora build. Awesome. Hope you love it. I only have two uh, 350 2.4s otherwise. Are you finding you're using the small printer a lot more? Or at least more than you might have expected? That's part of the motivation with this build is my zero needs to be taken apart and uh, my main zero and I want to have one to stand in its place. I'm using it constantly. It's so quick for whipping out parts. Awesome. Uh, more about being able to print above 110 C without issue. Reasonable. That's reasonable. Mine, my 60 watt in my, my 60 watt heater in my, um, I think it's a 60 watt in my main zero struggles a little bit with the bed. Not, not to maintain temp, but just getting to it. It's kind of like inconsistent on heating. Um, I don't know. It'll, it actually cause clipper shutdowns randomly and I don't understand why just like weird behavior that it has don't know okay oh i should check the switch on this before i even bother putting it in is there one i don't see one there is no switch is this an auto switching power supply well there's no switch so oh well All right, in place. Your 60 watt did that to you sometimes. Okay, I'm not alone. That brand makes auto switchables. Okay, cool. I've been wondering why more companies don't do, like auto switching power supplies is so common in computers. Why aren't they more common in this form factor and design. I don't know. Expense, I'm sure. Just a, another thing to add to the PCB and all that. Okay, now, oh God damn it, I just put that in backwards. It's supposed to be facing this way because the mains are over here. <laughs> uh, legs should definitely be unicorn too. They're dark magic and there's some unicorn going in there, but uh, damn it. I'm not paying attention enough. Now you get to see me talk about uh, removing VHB tape. Let me use a big scraper. Uh, what brand power supply is it? It is Morn Sun. Morn Sun. Uh, yes, Ballistic got it there. Morn Sun. Uh, just a quick turnaround. Uh, turn around the rest of the printer instead. Perfect. Ugh. Damn it. I used too much VHB tape too. Ay ay ay. I might be leaving it that way. <laughs> his his comment comes back to haunt him. You are correct. Yes, my my comments about VHB tape are haunting me at this moment. You are 100% correct. Okay. Can I get under there? Not really. Oh, there we go. There we go. Boom. Off. Now I'll scrape off the one side where I put on the wrong side. And that is why I fear VHB. That took a fair amount of pressure and effort, honestly. I, I do always kind of wonder over time, like heat cycling and whatever, will it last long term? But I've not had much in the way of VHB failures other than uh, the VHB on my 2.4 door gives up all the time. Yeah, that stinks. Mine have been pretty good, but I got to put click clack on that thing. I've got a click clack kit around here. I just got to put it in. Whenever I get around to doing the update on my uh, 2.4, we'll do that. Whenever I get around to the update, which will be after Rocky Mountain, as everything will be at this point, feels like. 
I've got to get this build done for Rocky Mountain and I need to do a video on Mandic really because it's been too long. I've been too focused on streaming lately. Oh. Uh, Click Clack is a nice upgrade, better than the split doors. Yeah, I, I think it's going to look a lot better if nothing else. I want to remix the, uh, the V0 variant for my next build too. For my main V0 build. When I update that too. Multiple updates coming in the near future. Multiple update projects. <laughs> when VHB gives up, it's VLB. VL very low bond. Yeah. Right, put a little more where this is actually supposed to go now. Peel the awful red stuff off. Hi, Bean. You woke up. You woke up. A gene appears. Get her up here in a second. It's been it's been like an hour and a half of the stream already, and you haven't two hours, two hours of stream, and you haven't been here yet. Oh, say hi. Say hi to everybody. Yeah? What? What? Just got home, loving the new look. Thank you, Robot Overlord. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's stand this back up so I can put this the way it's supposed to go. Going, kiddo. Makes her look huge. She is not huge, so she's not a big cat. She is not a big cat. Now, so now I've seen Jean. I can take off. All right. Thank you, Hobo Banana. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Jean says bye. A wild shiny gene appears. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now the power supply is where it's supposed to be. And VHB'd again. Now I need the mains wiring. I don't know where I put it, but... Gene gets her own stream when? I don't know. We'll have to talk to her about that. Can't let this go to her head too much, you know? We gotta, we gotta be careful. Calibration cube 20 millimeter spacers. Yep. Yep. I've been, uh, since I've been printing some more of the parts for this build, I've been printing a bunch of calibration cubes with the parts I'm printing to use more filament so the transition is better. So, I had them. I had them ready. Where'd I put the wiring? Where'd I put the wiring? Kirigami bed? Nope. Yeah, we gotta balance how much of this goes to Jean's head, her fame. You know, can't can't get her getting too big of the head. So we gotta we gotta figure things out as we go. All right. Inlet wires. Uh, how'd you manage to get a white Kirigami? I painted a gray one. I bought a gray Kirigami kit. Uh, I bought a gray Kirigami kit, scuffed it, and painted it. So I'm not 100% that it's going to hold up long term because it's just literally Rust Oleum white, but we'll find out. It's what I needed to do to get the job done. So, okay. Brown. Thank you, Gene. You're very helpful. But, yes, thank you. Where's this go? Yellow goes there, round. Get on there. Ah, oh, it's a tight spade connector. Are you flying with this printer? I'm hoping to get it shipped out, which is why I really need to get it done. 
uh, so I can get it shipped there in time. Header paint in an old oven, yeah. More so than anything, uh, because it's painted over anodizing, don't knock the printer over. Because it's painted over anodizing is my bigger concern. Jean claims it, yeah. <laughs> this one's hers. Um, my bigger problem is that it's, it's painted over an anodizing, which doesn't stick that well. So, I'm going to take my V0's carry-on. I, you know, I have a Pelican case, and I've tried to do that before, but the Pelican case is just too small to fit a V0. It, like, the V0 fits in it with no foam, but then it's not protected, so... Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Where did I put my screwdriver? There. Had bad, had good experiences with the Rust-Oleum White. Okay, hopefully it holds up. We'll find out. We're gonna find out. It's one of those I just to get this all done. I uh, thinner foam. I I forget. It's been a while since I tried fitting it in there. Um, fitting a V0 in there. So yeah. paper like foam on the outside you just got to be really careful with printers like this in transit and especially you know airports and freaking baggage handling they're not gentle this spade connector is so tight it does not want to slip onto its damn spade nope can't reach in there with that it's like they over crimped it by accident i just tried space like uh loosening it up with the flathead it's not helping Oh, did anybody get their their yearly Rex Manning Day uh, appreciation in yesterday? We we kind of fell asleep watching Empire Records last night. As the almost forty somethings we are, the oh, late thirty eights or late thirties that we are. Okay, one on. That was really tight, but it's on. The other two connections go. Blue brown, okay. I should have done this before I put it in here, which is my problem. I, I, I jumped ahead and I put the, uh, the AC inlet in before I made the connections. I uh, jumped ahead and screwed myself up. So let's see if I can push this out of here. There we go. Come on, get out of there. You can do it. Mm. Nope, it's just too tight in there. I'm not fucking with it. Not fucking with it. I'm gonna look, put this this way so I can see these connections better. It's always the balance of trying to get it so camera can see something and so I can see something. Aaron, welcome. You were here earlier, weren't you? I think right before I went live. Eh. Can you? Can we not flick your tail and knock stuff off the bench, please? Oh, well, let's drive home. I got you. Yep. Got you, got you. How is everybody? Welcome, welcome. Trying to use a pair of pliers to put this damn connection on, but it's fighting me. Screwed myself up here. Shock and awe. Seems to be a theme lately on stream. Alan messes up. It could be the other drinking game. That's a cough drop. That 
is a cough drop, kiddo. <clears throat> there we go. I think that's on there. Annoying. What do y'all think of the new Creality printer? I haven't looked at it enough. Somebody give me the rundown. What's the what's the selling points? I know they have the new AMS system of their own. Uh, what else is the selling points of the new Creality? Because I don't have one, and I haven't had a chance to watch any content about it yet. almost like the instructions are in a certain order uh totally taking myself to the camera gene has a really solid um this is why i don't necessarily want to give gene her own stream um is i think it's gonna go right to her head <laughs> dual motor four lead screw so you can do tilt adjust good take care of their leveling issues or at least help uh, new extruder, hopefully the new extruder. Oh, 350 cubed, cool. God, these things are so freaking tight. I think they got over crimped. All of them are just being a pain. Spade connectors should not be this big a problem. Gene already has her own stream. As, uh, you know, you're, you're not necessarily wrong. I started a stream, everybody always asks, where's Gene? So. <laughs> You're not necessarily wrong about that. does not feel confidence inspiring. Spade should not be this fucking difficult to put on. Alright. That's good. Now it's on. K2 has a nozzle cam. That's interesting. First printer I've heard of coming with a nozzle cam. That's new. That's new. Okay, now we can do the live terminal, or the uh, mains voltage connections. It, I'm watching this on my TV and it looks like Jean's reading the chat. She's reading the chat, yes, that's what, she, that's what she's doing. She has her own heads up display built into her head. Um, it's in her eyeballs because she's an alien cat, you know. Don't don't read into it too much. Okay. What's the name of the cat? This is Jean Grey. Jean Grey. Cutest mod ever. She works dirt cheap too. Just pets, just pets, switches, and uh, some uh, treats once in a while. Funny thing is, she's the smallest cat in the house. We have three cats. She's the smallest, uh, but she, hi, baby. But she also eats the most. So, just how it works out. She eats the most, or seems to. She's the one who's always at the food bowls. Whether or not she eats the same, more volume, I have no idea. All right, electrical connections, mains voltage made. She's no mod, she's the main attraction. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. She's more popular than me, I'm sure of that. All right. To peak umbilical, to main. Do they have us put the board in yet or? Nope. All right, power cables. Uh, 
24 volt in to main PCB. FOC closed loop motors on it. I saw something about there being like crazy stepping motors that step a lot finer, which seemed weird to me. She looks angry. Nah, it's just how she looks. She's got an alien face, a little alien face. I don't think this cat knows how to be angry. She doesn't, she doesn't know the, the meaning of the word. Sorry, kiddo. All right, 24 volt power lead. I don't see the pico bilical wiring yet. I don't see the wiring for the Pico yet. Filament system will use RFID. Okay, they really read, uh, they really read Bamboo's homework. Umbilical cable, 24 volt power. Okay, it's in there. They make five phase stepper motors with 500 steps per millimeter. Those are kind of cool. Never heard of those. Sure, that's some pretty expensive stuff. Okay, are you the umbilical to umbilical? Yeah. Getting an MM MMU three soon. Awesome. Hope that works out well for you. I've heard good things, but I uh, don't have one. Maybe I'll talk to Prusha at uh, at Rocky Mountain. SVO8 is more inspired by the uh, 2.4, not not made from. I mean, it's it, it it really looks at the homework. If you if you want to say it's just inspired, it's really inspired. <laughs> Pretty sure they are supporting the Voron team. That's so inspired, making contributions. So I've heard, not from anybody on the team, but. SVO8 is how you'd have to build a 2.4 in mass. That makes sense. Reasonable. Oh, the Mark IV looks lonely. It does. That's lit up now. I forgot to turn it on. They have said as much, but no affiliation. Yeah, understandable. Um, yeah, the Mark IV actually needs a tiny bit of work. I got to figure out what's up with it. It's extruding funky. I gotta mess with it a little bit. Okay, power wires. How do they want me to route these? How are they intending? Over that extrusion, I don't want that, but all right. Uh, they say they're donating to the team, but Nero said no official or um, like uh, affiliation. Understandable, and I, I wouldn't expect there to be. That would be, that really wouldn't be in the Voron team's way they work. $2 to the Voron per sale, according to Jonathan's video. Okay, haven't gotten a chance to watch his yet, so. Or anything, really. It's been a busy day before I got on stream and now I'm here, so. Yeah, kiddo, what's up? Okay. Don't think they can accept because it would be considered an endorsement. Um, I don't know about that. I can understand where you're coming from. You want to get down, baby? Oh, yeah. 
I understand where you're coming from. I, I, I don't know. No one on the team has confirmed it. Honestly. That's kind of a bigger deal to me. If they're making a claim... If they're making a claim and they're not actually following through, that's kind of extra shitty. Um, I hope they are. I I would give them the benefit of the doubt. It's early. They're just getting rolling with it. We'll, we'll see. I mean, obviously, they developed a whole product. Um... Yeah, they don't, they're a non-profit. They don't do any... There is a business around uh, the Voron team. It's not a business in the business of selling things, but there is a business. Um, entity exists, but I don't know. I haven't sold any yet, so they won't have done anything yet. Understandable, but you think that's something they would work out ahead of time. Who knows? I don't I don't freaking know. I don't know. It's supposed to go to the umbilical? That feels like it barely reaches. I gotta pull this. What the heck? One of these is like way long and one of them is not. Weird. Okay. The number of people who don't understand the price on the product page. It always gets me when people are like, $9,000, what? Like, it's a temporary placeholder, my friend. Okay, um, I haven't done the bed chain yet. That's something we haven't done yet. Should I have done that by now? I feel like I should have done that by now. Yes, there it is. Bed chain. Oh. Okay. Bring the bed up so I can get some space under it. About every five minutes on Eurostream is somebody commenting on the price. Sometimes you gotta lose a little faith in humanity. Do you think modern system, modern websites should have a better way of handling that? I don't disagree. It would annoy me if it was my store. But I also just don't list products ahead of time, but that's, I'm not in the business of pre-selling or making hype about what I'm selling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, it's over 9,000, yeah. Okay, so bed cables. Uh, let me adjust this camera real quick second camera angle haven't been using it enough all right bed cables uh where'd i put the chain please tell me this is an opening chain no i forgot it's not okay gotta feed all these wires through the chain Did you see they changed the reviews to comments? Yes, I did. I re I reposted it on Twitter. They reached out to me about that too, uh, saying it was totally unintentional and et cetera, et cetera. They definitely made a point of changing it. So I will take them at their word that it was a mistake. Um, you know, can't say, but I understand how that mistake could exist. Shouldn't, it should have been a little more obvious, but hey, here we are. Ah, oh, damn it. It peeked through one of them. I wasn't paying attention. He hit over 1,300 viewers, 900 confused about the price. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get this through here. Go. Daniel, welcome. Go in your home. Should have left the end capped on this. My fault. One more link. Cool. 
couple more. Ah, damn it, the wires peek through again. Ay -ay -ay. Usually I would heat shrink all of these together so they're not doing this, but here we are. I don't feel like it. Okay. There we go. V0 looks really nice. Thank you. It's coming together. It's coming together. Okay, now I can feed this down through here. I'm gonna feed it through the bottom panel. Come on. Go. It's Project Wonderful. Pimp your printer project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Get this cable through here. Uh, oh, God damn it. Whoever's playing the drinking game of Alan screws up. Take a drink. I put this bell in here backwards. I put the wrong side to the wrong side. I could probably swap out the ends, but I would have to mess with those square nuts to do that. I'm not doing it. You're gonna make gonna make you go back and sleeve your cables. Honestly, it's kind of cool to sleeve your cables inside of the cable chain because then you see the color peek through the chain. I really like the look. Um, may I ask what the extruder? Uh, this is the Proto Extruder. Do I have it linked in the chat, in the uh, description of the video? I did, I thought. I don't. Oops, I don't. Uh, it's the Proto Extruder 2.0. Uh, you can find it on printables. Proto Extruder with no E, just all one word. I'll drop it in chat. It uses the L HGX gears. Yeah. Uh, you could gr glue a horn to the logo point. That's a, that's a fun idea. That's a fun idea. Hmm. Maybe I'll like make a printable horn to put on the top of the machine or something for the unicorn. I don't know. Stick a uh, stick a Revo nozzle in it. Him a tip. Uh, love sleeve cables. Try to sleeve everything, even this one for my SB2209. Yep, the cable on my 2.4 is sleeved for the 2209 as well. Make it RGB. That's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Would personally enjoy a, a, a tutorial on sleeving. You know what? Now that I have Mandic Labs, uh, that's something I've talked about. This channel, I intend to do stuff like that. The things that I could never really justify a full video about on Mandic Really, um, I hope to do more of that stuff on this channel. So, totally. I could see doing that. Just a quick, like, how I sleeve things video. That would be a good idea colorful printed cookies on the bottom. Ooh, I hadn't thought about that. I could like design up some silly cookies and, and print them in this material and or put them in the bottom. Get in your home. Guide it all through this hole in the bottom. I gotta figure out how I wanna cable manage the Nevermore cable because it comes out this end so it's got to run along this frame. I think I'm going to design a, a piece like a cable management piece back here that'll kind of hold it like that. I wish I had white cable sleeving so it wasn't black but it's what I had. It's either that or pink and I don't like this pink that much for this so not that much anyway. Get in there. Still waiting to see the multicolored single nozzle print thing. It's coming. 
this just took precedent. Once the frame showed up, I had to focus on this. So I wanted to film it while I was working on this, but I kind of just didn't have time. Uh, that Proto Extruder, uh, Nuno, you're mentioning the Proto Extruder 2.0. The one that I'm running on here uses the 2.0 gears. They're different. They are different. So it's the Proto Extruder 2.0. Um, it uses the HGX 2.0 gears. I had, because I ordered in a set of regular HGX gears and they're different. Um, I had to order in, after I already ordered those, I had ordered the 2.0 gears. My fault. Totally my fault. Like the, the printables link says that. I just didn't read it properly. So. Get in there, cable chain. Get in your home. Oh, you know what? I need to determine, make sure, but I've got enough links on this. I think I do. Pretty sure it's proper. Let's pull this through. Come on. Oh, shit. I'm wondering why it's getting so hot in here. The heat's still on. <laughs> I turned the AC on, it was so warm in here earlier, but I, now it got cool enough that the heat kicked on. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go turn that off in a second because it is getting baking hot as they are fighting. Oh my God, this won't fucking clip. Put, pull the ears together, squeeze them with a pair of pliers. Oh my god. Everything's just trying to piss me off. I should have done this before I put the back panel in. Here we are. Why? There's no ramps on these little nubs on this one. So they don't want to start. Get over there. I can't lean it back enough because of the back panel to angle it. There we go. Come on, you can do it. Oh my God. Now it won't get on even though it slipped on the one side. What the hell? It just won't clip on. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but it's like it's clipped onto one side, but not the other. It shouldn't even like feels like it shouldn't be possible. Uh, what tool head am I using? I designed it. It's just a, a modified mini stealth burner. It's of my own design. Okay, I'm gonna pop this off of here, like I should have done five minutes ago, and figure out why it won't clip in. Cause it just won't clip in. Refuses, says no. I shall not. <sighs> yeah, it's just a modified mini stealth burner that I'm running. Yeah, like, I don't know if you can see this, but it just will not clip on this side. Oh, I see why. There's like some gunk in the the opening no no there's like a there's like a nub in the opening or something it's being weird I gotta clean it out a little like some plastic must have scraped as I was pushing it together and it got into the hole so it wouldn't allow it to go together like as soon as I took it apart it fell away and it's gone Is it that this one won't go this way? Did I put it the wrong way? I don't think so. Let me try putting it together the opposite way just to see if that makes a difference because it is not going together this way. It 
Fuck, it goes right together. It is that. God damn it. So it's just backwards? But this... That doesn't work either way, does it? Yeah, it would. Motherfucker. Bingo. You were right. So I gotta take the bottom one off now, too. God damn it. That's fucking annoying. Yeah, I gotta take the bottom uh, connector off the frame. Which is not ideal with this frame. Not ideal. Should have checked that. Should have checked that. I've probably gotten lucky the last couple times I've put one together and totally forgot. Or totally forgot altogether. You know, column A, column B. Isn't that the theme of this printer? Do, then redo? You are not wrong. You're not wrong. Cool, those are longer than they need to be. The screws are longer than they need to be. What size are these? M3 by 8s? They should be 6s. Tiny chains are super annoying. Yeah. You're not wrong. Oh yeah, there was another factor about the way this whole frame goes together on this build. Uh, I actually had to, I had to cut um, a couple places on this build. I forgot to mention that. These rectangular nuts that they use... The rectangular nuts don't let you put two nuts close enough together for some things. Hey, where'd it go? Eh. Okay, they don't let you get close enough together for these. So I had to cut a couple of these down, and it was not fun. They're really hard to cut. So, whatever. Dumb shit. Damn shit. Okay. Now, uh, flip it around on the cable. I can't. I have to. I have to totally take it out and put it back on now. This isn't gonna work. Gotta go the other way. Uh, the door magnets can be a problem. That's the other place I did that. You're right. Uh, the door magnets. I had to cut them down and do that too. Yep, yep. Okay, so that goes that way. I'm gonna attach this to the frame in a second. Do, then redo. That is the theme of this build, apparently. Luckily, because this is down at the bottom of the extrusion, I can start these nuts outside of the frame and then slip this in. So that's a positive. Nadir, welcome, hello. Hello, hello. All right, now I'm gonna slip the cable through this. Um, it's going this way, yes. Okay, this is only what, the fourth time I'm putting this through here in the stream? That's all. Totally normal, reasonable situation. <laughs> Dang, I'm late. Well, welcome, Joe Show. Welcome anyway. Yeah, probably only gonna... We're gonna go for three hours tonight, so, yeah. That tends to happen, Steve. Builds, unbuilds. <laughs> I haven't watched enough of the streams... Uh, of Steve's streams. Uh, Steve has a nice little model to add some strain relief to the bottom of that cable. I'm gonna have to look for that. I do not, I do not know that. I also haven't really seen a problem with needing to, but I, I'm a big fan of strain relief, so I'm not gonna be upset about finding one. Finding something that I wasn't aware of. Okay. Alright, now, maybe I can achieve something on this stream. Please, something. At this rate, I'm not going to be able to stream 
Where are you reading chat from? I have a TV in front of the desk that I uh, read the live chat from. Which is a bit disorienting, I understand. <laughs> Just how I do things, it's easier than looking. The monitor's over here, camera's here, TV's there. It's a little closer to the perspective. Probably not as necessary for this for a, a zero, but it's Steve. Hey, I love Steve. I'm not. Um, I, I do know. I, I, I feel that. Uh, damn it! The other nut fell off of here. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Is it at least mounted vertical? What the TV? It's not the perfect situation too because I fall behind reading uh, the, the stream and it doesn't give me like notifications when people become members which is not great on my part yeah like at least a couple of people became members in the stream Numa uh, Numa became a member thank you so much I definitely acknowledged Ella and Fabrico thank you to them but Numa became a member as well thank you maximum chats all the chats maybe the next studio setup Next studio, it would be kind of sick to have a vertical monitor, like, TV over there so I could watch chat better. And I could have, like, this interface over there. That's a good idea. We'll talk about it. The next studio will definitely be a little more logically set up for streams. Um, since I'm streaming more. So. And I wasn't when I built this one out first. Cool. Slide these into place. Go, 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 go. Get in your home. There we go. Um, should do a Discord thing, make interactions better. Yeah. There's a few few improvements I want to make in, along those lines. Like getting the chat integrated probably into the feed so folks can see things better, getting notifications and, and pop-ups and stuff for like when people become members to acknowledge them better and super chats and stuff. Yeah, various things. Uh, teleprompter, yeah. I've never been a fan of teleprompters uh, because I don't script my videos, but for streams, it probably does make a lot more sense. You need to admit it's more fun to stream than to make videos. I really love making videos. I love making videos. It's a lot easier to stream and still have fun while doing it. So that's why I've fallen into a habit of streaming a lot lately because it is so much easier to do than produce a video. <laughs> People can link photos. Yeah, definitely. We're going to get the Discord thing going. It's going to happen. I just got to figure it out. Please no chat baked into the video feed. See, I, I agree with that. I do. Um, but I've had people request it because some people like to watch back streams after the after they're over. Um, and uh, they claim that YouTube like loses the chat sometimes and it doesn't sync properly or something. I agree, but I'm trying to balance what some people have requested and, and other. I, I don't know. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Does YouTube have a TTS integration for Super Chats or people joining as channel members? I don't know that they do. I know there is integration with like Streamlabs and things like that. Uh, I think you have to give like access to the service to do it. So I don't know. If you edit the stream, it won't show the chat. Well, no, 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 no. Oh, if you edit the stream, it won't show the chat. Oh, that's really, oh, that makes sense. Shit. I did not realize that uh, because I edited a stream a little bit ago because like two or three streams ago, we had like five minutes at the beginning where there was a bunch of problems. So I edited that five minutes out. But that might have screwed up the chat. Good to know. Uh, stream Labs and Stream Elements can do that stuff. Yeah, I used to use Stream Labs when I was game streaming a while back. 
and I liked it for like those kind of pop-up notifications and stuff, but I don't know. Don't know. But Loctite on these screws is. Too much Loctite on these screws is. Okay. I put I put the wrong screw in one of these. Print the ch print the chat on a CR30. <laughs> I could get a dot matrix printer and have it print the chat. That wouldn't be disruptive to the chat, would it? Just a continuous stream of dot ma matrix noise. I think I saw that on TikTok once where somebody did that. Some type of integration that their TikTok stream, like, I think everybody who donated printed on a dot matrix printer and that was the stream. That was it. The stream was just the dot matrix printer existing and then people would send, you know, gifts on TikTok, aka Super Chats. And their name would print out. People need that instant gratification after seeing their name and the funny animation to pop up. Yeah, like I want to have a gene pop up. I want to have like a the gene the animated gene character pop up and thank people for joining or for super chats. I really want to do that stuff. So LED matrix below the filament rolls. We'll talk. Upcoming. Know of at least one guy on Twitch who prints out um, new subs on the Game Boy printer. That's fun. That's fun. Okay. Uh, I don't love... I feel like I need some cable management here. For the uh, Z chain, but I will mess with that. I don't know. I will mess with that, uh, I think off stream at this rate i'd really hope to stream the entire build of this thing but i really need to get this done and off to um i'm sorry i don't care uh i really need to get this done and off to rocky mountain so i might have to finish up the build i'm thinking at this rate i might spend tomorrow finishing up the build and then maybe thursday we can do a stream of uh, error. A stream of like tuning it in. You know, getting it rolling. First moves and all that stuff. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. So I've only got about 12 minutes left on this stream, I think. Um, am I a mad lad for putting a Rapido, a Rapido UHF in a, in a zero? Go for it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think you're mad. Have fun. Have fun with the stuff, you know? It needs to be like a string, like a, a cable chain, like a, the, get the likes up chat. Oh, getting called out folks. I feel like there might be one link less than there should be. Eh, no. Okay, that looks good. Uh, never been in the US, but love Colorado for the events that are in the mountains. I've never been to Colorado. It's gonna be my first time. I'm looking forward to that. It'll be my first time for the show. Done, thank you. Where are we at with the likes? 58 likes. Come on. Does your outside chain droop over at the bottom? Um, yes, a lot. My outside chain does droop over a lot at the bottom. I'm definitely going to be converting my 0.1 to a 0.2 for this. I like this so much better. I like that it's tight to the extrusion. It's clean. None of the drooping. Yeah. Trying to get bronchitis in check. Oh, good luck. Hopefully you, uh, hopefully you're good. I'm dreading the concept of getting sick. So, dreading that concept. Okay, um, I think we could probably put the Pico and the Pi in yet. <laughs> Pico and Pi? You know, Pico and Pi. 
All right, all right. Put this down with face. Uh, I don't even know if the ob spot is working. I haven't used it at all the stream. Let me pull it up real quick because it'll get a better downward angle on this. You'll have a better angle. Good night, everyone here in Romania. It's almost 2 a.m. Thank you for stopping by, Nadir. Thank you, thank you. I don't think the spot's on, actually, now that I think about it. Connect, 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 connect. You know, very end of the stream, get one more camera in here. You know, usual. Let's see if I can connect with my phone. Takes a takes a second. Whoop. Ob bot. I want to get the Pico and the Pi in here yet. Okay, I think this is working now. Remind me later. Yay! Working! There we go. There we go. I'm going to zoom a bit. Let's go one and a half times zoom. Okay. Cool. Now we got a SKR Pico board going in here. And I'm going to be putting a Pi 4. Should I put a Pi 4 or a Pi 3? Doesn't really matter. Is there any functionality you lose? Which Pi are you using? Uh, I had somewhat frustrating time figuring out what DIN mounts to use for the Pi 3 4. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be using a Pi 3 or Pi 4 because I'm putting a wave share screen on this one. Um, so Pi 3 or Pi 4. Um, which do I want? I've got both. I don't really have any use for a Pi 3 for anything. I have a project coming up where I need a Pi 4. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. More than tempted to go with the Pi 3. I think I'm gonna put the Pi 3. So I was originally gonna put a, a v uh, Pi 0 in it. Uh, I'm gonna go with the 3. Um, I was originally gonna put a 0 in this. Zero two W, but then I decided I wanted to add the screen. So uh, you need a DSI connection, which only the Pi three or four has. Okay, Pico and a Pi. Pico and a Pi. Pico and a Pi. Put this back in here for the moment, just so I can get these mounted. Can't you hot swap the pies in case of performance issues? I think it can be done. I don't know if it's necessarily hot swap. Um, I can't see why there's gonna be performance issues though. Like my my other V0 runs on a Pi Zero, two uh, W, perfectly fine. So okay, these need to mount here and here. I printed mounts for these. Somewhere. There's one. And two. Pi three is perfect for this. Yeah. Have a personal stash of pies as a flex. I didn't even pull out all of them. I just pulled out two. <laughs> I have, I have, I do have a current personal stash. It's dwindling. It is dwindling, but. A hot swap. <laughs> well, yes, hot swap is not really the issue. Um, uh, only issue with Pi Zero is you can't use Numpy for input shaping. Yes. 
Um, that's the problem I have on my main zero. One of the problems, I've never run input shaper on it because the Pi Zero 2W can't run input shaping. And it also can't run TMC Auto-Tune. They both need NumPy and a different variant of Python than the Pi Zero runs. Um, otherwise, the Pi Zero runs beautifully in there, but that is an issue. Okay, little VHB tape. That's, I'm not even bothering with the DIN clips and all the shit. Uh, input shaping runs off NumPy? Yes, and Python. Well, I'm, I'm no programmer, so I don't really know what those things mean, honestly. I just know to run the commands, and that you need to have NumPy set up to run input shaping. So, beyond that? Sure. Don't know. Uh, the calculations it runs use NumPy. Okay. Okay. VHB tape on one of these. Both of these just use, uh, if you're not familiar, the SKR Pico from Big Tree Tech has the same footprint as a Pi, a Raspberry Pi. Same bolt pattern and all that. So, same mount for both of these. Ba -ba -ba. All right, pull out the screws. Screwsy screws. Uh. Oh, shit. Just dawned on me. I don't know if these screws are going to work because I am going to be using my own fan mount design. I've got these fan mounts that use, that are for Pi Pico, uh, for the Picos and for the Pies. And they mount like this around the GPIO on the, on the Pi. And shit. Wait, no. Not around the GPIO, around the um, the other side on this one. <laughs> I gotta put some heat press inserts in it for one. I don't remember, I don't think these screws are long enough to get through this. Find out in a second. And then into the mount. Eh, they might be. Okay, a couple of heat press inserts. Yeah, it doesn't need, uh, you can just input input shaper values. It's reading and then processing input shaper that's the issue. Uh, you can compile NumPy on a bigger Pi then move it to the Pi 02 w Okay, never heard that. That kind of makes sense. LDO has the custom cleats. Yeah, I, I saw those. Uh, the problem is I can't afford the vertical height. I'll show you what I mean in a second. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's get this installed on here and it'll be pretty obvious. Hopefully this goes through enough. It's gonna be just enough if it does. Just enough if it does. This is my shorter variant of my fan thing. I do have a longer one. I think I might need to print for this. Think, I think. Alright, a couple more screws. The white frame looks dope. Yeah, the white frame is definitely the right call. It looks so much better with the white frame. I don't know who I don't remember who was the first person to suggest it, but it is so much better. grab a fan quick Ugh. 
And I think we're gonna call it here shortly, but let's grab a fan, slap it on here. You kind of get the full picture of what's happening. Really looking forward to seeing it. Yes. Awesome. It'll be in the uh, cookie CAD booth at the show. I've talked to the folks and it will be. Okay. So the reason I don't want to use the cleats, well, it does clear a lot better with this lower fan mount I have, but like I I'm worried about the, the height clearance with having the cleats and stuff installed in here um, for mounting the LDO way. I don't know. Maybe I'll play with this a little bit before I commit to how I'm setting this up. So, because my l shorter fan mount actually makes a big difference, bringing the fan closer. But Pico is going to go. That's a little overexposed because the white frame. But Pico goes there. Pi will go here. And yeah. And Pico Bilico goes up top here. So, all right, folks, I think that's where we're gonna have to wrap it up for this one. Uh, yep, I, I wanted to be done around seven ish. I know Steve's gonna be live at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, anyway, uh, 5 p.m. his time. Um, and I, I could use some better cooling. Yeah, because also the um, ballistic, that back panel that I was talking about the hex back panel that I need to finish up for this uh, has hole locations intended for these fans to draw fresh air from outside and blow in. So yeah, Aaron, the best coast. Well, you gotta, it'll be the best once I'm there and Gene's there, mostly once Gene's there. Um, so I, I realize this will be the first chance I'm getting to use the 24 volt Noctua's. I don't have to run buck converters. I forgot I had a couple of the 24 volt Noctua's so I don't have to use buck converters. It'll be the first time I get to do that. But, yeah. All right, folks. I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for today. I don't know. Um, Modbot streams tomorrow. Daniel streams tomorrow. And Nero streams tomorrow, right? Does Nero do Wednesday streams? I forget. I'm just... Uh, I'm just thinking about whether or not I should stream t tomorrow to continue this project or just plug away at it on my own. I really hope to stream the builds. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays for Nero. Okay, I'll hit up uh, Daniel Modbot, see when he's streaming. It's rough finding the clear spot to stream. It is, it is. Yeah. Grant may stream tomorrow. I forgot, okay, that's what I forgot. Grant streams some Wednesdays. So I will hit up Modbot and maybe Grant and see where they're going and see if we can't just plug away at streaming this build because I don't want to I don't want to do it off stream I do want to do it on stream but I've also just got to get this done it's got to be done so because I need to get it shipped out ASAP to get it to Colorado in a safe time so modbots 2 p.m. EST okay um Pacific 11 Pacific okay then maybe we'll either do before or after him. I gotta figure out my day. I don't know. If I'm streaming, I'm streaming. <laughs> Sorry that that's the schedule at the moment. Just stream and the followers will come. Honestly, that's been the best thing about these streams. I appreciate you folks so much because y'all turn up. Uh, y'all turn up like a lot and I really appreciate it. So, uh, love in the future, someone seeing the VOD build and seeing a sudden change from black to white. I know. I was, I was, I'm, uh, I like that. <laughs> it's silly. I'm, I'm good with that. So, all right, folks, that's going to call it for this one. I got to head out. I got to go make dinner and figure out my day for tomorrow. I will try and post about streaming, like when I'll be streaming ASAP. Hopefully I can put out an announcement sooner rather than later and get you all informed. So thank you everybody for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you to the new channel members. 
Have I ever tried to switch wire? Nope, and I don't currently have any intention of doing so. I need to move away from borons. I need to build more stuff. So thank you all for being here. Thank you to the channel members. Uh, I don't think there were any super chats this time around, but thank you to everybody for being a supporter. Just being here watching really helps out. Drop a like before you head out and I will catch you all in the next one, hopefully tomorrow. So see you folks. Uh, I, let's see if I can get the gene cam up. I don't think I can. I'm just going to turn one of the cameras to face Gene. <laughs> okay, now we can head out. All right, folks. Bye-bye.